Upon being present, the second half of our annual town meeting will now come to order. Madam Clerk, has the warrant been properly posted as required by the general laws of, of the town of Granby? Yes, it has. Please rise as select board chairman, Mr. Bale, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who are new at town meeting, sitting in the front, you have your school committee to the far right, then you have your finance committee, you have your select board, town administrator, town attorney, and town clerk. If you are a non-resident or non-voter, please sit in the back of the room where it is marked for non-residents. If you'd like to comment or discuss on an article tonight as moved, please raise your hand so I can recognize you. The microphone will come to you and you will need to state your name and address before you state your question. Please direct all your discussion or questions to me and I will direct it to the proper person at town meeting. Do not direct a comment, please, to people at town meeting. Lastly, if you feel overheated, we do have air conditioning in the media center, which is down the hall. The moderator will now recognize Kathy Kelly Reagan. Well, good evening, and thank everyone uh, coming out in this very blistery hot day. Um, and we really appreciate you supporting the town uh, affairs. Uh, the reason I'm up here is I want to remind everybody that on Monday, June 26th, we will be having a special election override. The time for that is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. here at the high school. It's run just like a regular election. And if you have reason not to be able to make that time, such as work, on vacation, religious beliefs, you can do an absentee ballot up until Friday the 23rd. I'll be at my office till 5 o'clock that day for anybody to file an absentee ballot. Um, ballots are now available, so if you fall under those reasons, certainly give me a call and I can tell you how to file for an absentee ballot. Um, are, any questions? Okay, thank you. The moderator will now recognize Kate Mercier from the Granby 250th Celebration Committee. Good evening. Many of you may not know that we had a Miss Granby contest that was held uh, May 6, 2017 for young women in Granby residents ages uh, 17 to 22. Um, we had a black gala at the Mount Holyoke College to crown Miss Granby and to kick off the 250th celebration of our town. And I would like to introduce to you the court of Miss Granby, Sid uh, excuse me, Samantha Judicki. Wave, Samantha. Carol Gould, Lindsay Nobes, Megan Jolivet, Brooklyn Barron, and uh, to Miss Granby 2017 to 2018 is Miss Sydney Codare. These young women are awesome. You should be so proud of them. Every single one of them has such beautiful characteristics, not just about what they look like, but what kind of young woman they are. And if anyone ever tells you, crab it about the, the new uh, generation, take a look at this and be proud. Um, these girls were sponsored by um, businesses in our town, which we so appreciate. They are as follows. Mercy or Carpet. Dressel's Service Station, the Ed Oz Manufacturer Reps, the Randall Family, Granby Grain, 
Ramby Booster Club, and Pleasant Street Auto. All of these sponsors sponsored our girls. We are going to be involved in a lot of the celebrations for the 250th celebration. And for those of you that don't know what that's about, the Miss Gramby contest has not been held since 1968. It's held every 50 years. So this is a big deal for our town, and I hope you'll get involved with all the, the uh, different activities that are planned. On June 10th at Charter Day, we uh, had Miss Gramby and her court, Samantha Lindsay in Brooklyn, um, where, Ms., where Sydney received her scholarship check uh, for college for $1,000, again supported by, um, partly by the committee that does the 250th celebration, and also by our sponsors. I just hope that you um, are able to talk to these young women, and again, we're so proud for all the accomplishments that they're doing now and that they will do in the future. Thank you so much. The moderator will now recognize Emory Everin of the school committee to speak. Madam Moderator, I run uh, Emory Everin, 18 Crescent Street. I am also the chair of the uh, school committee. I rise to recognize a lifelong resident of Granby and to celebrate his great contributions to public education in our town. Most of you, probably all of you, know him as Mr. Pietras, so I will recognize Jim Pietras. Jim is an energized volunteer, a proud member of the Lions Club, a member of many committees in our town. But he is first and foremost a passionate steward of public education. Jim graduated from Granby High School in 1968. In fact, he was one of the first, first to graduate in this very building. He received his bachelor's degree at what was then Westfield State College, and then he proceeded to get his master's in elementary administration at the same place. He immediately returned to Granby in 1973 to teach. He was trained originally to teach history and social studies to high school. Uh, students. In 1987, well, then you know what happened. He did not do that, and he went uh, on to uh, East Meadow. In 1987, when the previous principal unexpectedly left East Meadow, Jim became the interim principal. For the first five years of his tenure, Jim was principal for both East Meadow and West Street schools. He retired from East Meadow in 2011, which concluded his long career at Granby Schools, or so he thought. In 2013, Jim joined the Granby School Committee as a result of a write-in. He did not know about this. He found out that a lot of folks decided he would be a good addition to the school committee, and we agreed with that. As much as he was enjoying his retirement, he could not say no to the call to help public schools in a different way. At the end of his first term, Jim agreed to pick up a, one additional uh, year uh, that was left over from another uh, member of our committee. About a month ago, our committee said goodbye and thanks to Jim. Jim brought to the school committee his experience of many years in the school district. We benefited tremendously from his knowledge of Granby schools, the history of our schools, past actions and events when we needed to learn more about what was going on in the past. He was a passionate and outspoken advocate for our schools, and more importantly, he was then, he still is, Mr. Putris to the students he had and uh, um, until 2011. Well, we have seen time and again how much his students, the teachers, parents, and our community overall respected, trusted, and loved Mr. Putris. He certainly deserves all of that. So please join me in thanking Jim for all that he's done for our town and on his second retirement from Granby Public Schools.
The moderator will now recognize Larry Petrus from GCAM to speak. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Tonight, I've had many years of privilege of working with a lot of bright and talented people with Granby Cable TV. And it's my honor to ask Teresa LaJoy to come up, please. Teresa LaJoy. On a brief note, every 2017 town meeting is going to be available for the hearing impaired with closed captioning. It'll be on YouTube. So if you have any questions, you can call GCAM at 413-467-1180. First, I'd like to preface this plaque presentation with a Merriam-Webster definition of the word pioneer. It means one that originates or helps open up a new line of thought or activity. And this plaque says, Teresa LaJoy, thank you for your 15 years of outstanding dedicated service to Granby TV. You are a true pioneer. Pioneer to me means old, so, but I guess. <laughs> the moderator will now recognize Jay Joyce of the Energy Committee to now speak. The energy, on behalf of the Energy Committee, we've been asked to update you on what has happened in our town since 1 January of this year. The books that you have only cover the year 2016. On the Energy Committee, we use a number of different grants, which are assets, to turn around and do whatever we can for the town. These grants are federally or state funded through the tax money that you pay through your taxes, and we'd like to get as much back for you as we can. We like to look at the Green Community Grant, which is our largest grant, which our town has, as sort of like a rewards program. Under the Green Community Grant, one of the goals is we are to reduce our energy consumption, whether it's in vehicles, buildings, whatever, by 20% over five years. The second goal is we're to reduce our carbon footprint as well to become a greener community and help make it better for everybody. For a quick review, Granby applied to the Department of Energy to become a green community in 2011. The Department of Energy accept Granby into the program in 2013. In 2014, by coming, being certified as a green community, we received our first yearly grant of $144,000 to be used within our community to make things better, as I've already defined. Unfortunately, we haven't received a grant since 2014 because the town has not complied with the green community terms and conditions. So we've lost money in 2015, 2016, and 2017. With that being said, the Board of Selectmen reorganized the Energy Committee in August of 2016. And through the work of the Energy Committee, the Board of Selectmen, the Town Administrator, and all the Town Department heads, and we went to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to get some consultants which we actually paid for with another grant, so that was no cost to any of our taxpayers here. And I'm proud to say as of 1 May 2017, we are back in the good standings in the green community, and we are eligible for the next grant, which will be a quarter million dollars, as long as we justify the projects. An example of what we're doing with that is currently the select board with the recommendation of the town administrator and the energy committee 
is having all the municipal buildings in Granby having a level two energy audit conducted so we get a baseline. So we know where we are, so we know where to go, so we can complete a short-term and a long-term plan using grant money wherever possible and not taxpayers' money to improve our town and cut the costs. With that being said, I also want to make notation that as of 1 June of 2017, Granby will be using solar energy for 90% of all the municipal buildings at a reduced cost, which was negotiated by our select board. So we are gonna get a 20% reduction in the cost of electricity that Natural Grid used to pay us with this new company, and this contract is for 20 years. So I think the select board has done a real good job as far as that goes. In conclusion, the Energy Committee, Board of Selectmen, and Town Administrator continue to want to reduce Granby's energy consumption everywhere. And I see Lynn on my lap, so my time is up. You right? <laughs> The moderator will now recognize Chief Wishart of the Bylaw Review Committee to speak. Good evening, uh, Al Wishart, Trout Lily Lane, uh, also the uh, chair of the Bylaw Review Committee. I've been asked uh, by the select board to give you just a brief overview of where we uh, where we are and what we've done. Uh, we started um, to review the bylaws in October of uh, 2015. We've met approximately 35 times or so in that time period. Uh, we quickly realized that this project was much bigger than we thought it would be. Uh, to give you an idea, when it was, they were last reviewed, we believe it was 20 plus years ago. We're not exactly sure. So you can imagine there's a lot of things that need to be updated and reviewed and added or deleted. Uh, we are still working on the bylaws, but as of right now, we feel like we've got the lion's share of the work done. And we hope to have uh, a first kind of final draft uh, sometime later this year. So our intent is to have uh, some public hearings to kind of break it out in chunks because it is such a massive document and answer questions related to it um, in two or three, maybe four meetings. Uh, we'll have to present it to the uh, Board of Selectmen. And in terms of the, the process of or how it would uh, transpire, uh, once we have a final document, the, um, the Board of Selectmen would have to approve it. The, uh, Town Council would have to look at it, and probably most importantly, the entire town would have to approve it at a town meeting. After that, it would be um, uh, approved by the Attorney General. So uh, we are open to uh, all uh, suggestions or um, questions about the process. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to uh, reach out to me at the Police Department. Send an email to, to me or one of the other uh, commu uh, committee members. Thank you. Thank you. The moderator will now recognize Mr. Bale of the Select Board to speak. Okay. I'm going to read fast because uh, otherwise Lynn's going to yank me by the tie. When I started the practice of giving the state of the town address uh, eight years ago, I knew we'd be facing tough times in Granby. The dump was closing. Our source of extra money was drying up. Our high school building project had failed. Students were fleeing our schools. We're still facing tough times, but I see small signs of hope. We are better informed as a town, guided less by unsupported opinions and more by facts. We've been better at understanding our difficulties. Our fiscal situation remains difficult, but we have a completely new administration in our school system. We have a school committee that fully understands the challenges we face today. We have a better, more informed relationship between our budget-making committees. Eight years ago, we were not fully equipped to deal with our school's fiscal challenges. Today, we are. Unfortunately, we're being held back by the decision makers in Boston who have failed to do their part. As you may know, the Board of Selectmen has no authority over our school system. So why, you might ask, am I using my final state of the town speech to talk about our schools? After all, other town departments are as important as our schools and they also deserve resources. Why focus on the schools? The answer is simple. Other town departments are much less costly and much less dependent on state aid. 
40% of our annual town budget is split between police, fire, ambulance, and highway departments, and general government. The rest is dedicated to our schools. Schools have more personnel um, than other departments. They also have more costs that outpace inflation. The dirty little secret, however, the fact that our leaders on Be Beacon Hill don't want you to know, is that they have not been doing their part. In 1993, the Commonwealth built a time bomb of partially funded and unfunded educational mandates and imposed, mandates and imposed them on cities and towns. The name of that time bomb was Chapter 70. It's a law, it's a law that contains the formula that apportions state aid to public school systems. It's been blowing up in our face for several years, and although we have felt the blowback at town meeting, we've never fully understood or acknowledged the source. I've been talking about the problem of state funding for a few years now, but I never quite understood the lack of responsibility on the part of the state. In 1993, the folks on Beacon Hill passed a new educational law that contained the Chapter 70 formula. They were supposed to fund the entire formula. They never did. They were supposed to follow the law. They didn't always do that. They were supposed to account for inflation. They only did what they felt like doing. When they were supposed to review the Chapter 70 every year, they finally got around to publishing a report about 2015. Other than that, other than noting funding is inadequate, they've done nothing about it. They made the rules. They made the mandates. They don't fund them adequately. When it comes to education, the buck doesn't stop in Boston, it stops here. It stops here where we're forced to choose between catastrophic cuts, using up our savings, and raising taxes. It stops here when we argue with each other, blame each other, and ignore the greatest source of our fiscal difficulties, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We're accustomed to thinking of all our difficulties arising from and being solved in the boundaries of our town. We can no longer think this way. We are not and can never be self-sufficient. No Massachusetts city or town is self-sufficient. The leadership on Beacon Hill has been, be hiding, been be hiding behind the ignorance of this fact. It's time for that to stop. It's time to hold Boston responsible for passing the buck. The state of Granby doesn't merely depend on us. It depends on our leaders at Beacon Hill. The moderator will now recognize Mr. Libera of the Finance Committee to speak. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Libera, representing the Finance Committee. In this, our annual report, we'd like to give you a brief description of the budget for the upcoming fiscal year and make a few observations. We're presenting a balanced budget for Granby for fiscal year 2018. On the income side, total state aid to Granby, Granby is projected to decrease by about $77,000 for the coming fiscal year. State aid pays for more than 30% of Granby's operating budgets. Chapter 90 income from the state, which pays for road repairs and improvements, is also projected to have a small decrease. These funds are lower than they have been at any time since fiscal year 2011. On the expenditure side, the budget guidelines for general government departments are very tight. Elected officials receive 2% raises, and town employees subject to the personnel board receive step raises where merited through performance evaluations, plus a 2% increase. Guidelines for total budget expenses again call for a maximum 2% increase. Total expenses in this budget are up a little over a million dollars, $1.11 million. This is mostly attributable to the school bond repayment of over $805,000. Other items are an operating expense increase of $102,000, large capital expenditures of $204,000. There were no large capital expenditures in the current fiscal year 2017 budget. The amounts to be spent on education are $11,649,942 for operating expenses, $131,565 on large capital items, and $805,109 for repayment of the loan to build the new school complex. The total is $12,586,616. The amounts spent on general government are $7,662,533 on operating expenses 
and $72,500 on large capital items, totaling $7.7 .7 million. In fiscal year 2010, the state mandated minimum net school spending requirement for Granby with the equivalent of $8,104 per pupil. Over the next seven years, the consumer price index increased by a total of 10.79%. 10, 10 the Granby school enrollment decreased by a total of 32.8%. In virtually every other economic endeavor in our lives, we would have expected the per pupil expenditure to go up approximately by that 10.79%. But the state is very generous in its attitude towards education. The state mandated minimum net school spending for Granby for this fiscal year amounts to $12,367 per pupil. The mandated increase is 52.6%, not 10.79%. This is not chump change. It's an extra 2.56 million above what you might expect from inflation. <clears throat> Now there is absolutely no question about spending that extra 2.56 million. The state has an interest in the education of all students. The state has mandated this amount and Granby should agree. Beyond that is up to the town citizens. Granby recently made the largest financial commitment in its history and the fiscal year 2018 budget carries the first 805,000 of 25 years of payments to satisfy that commitment. The community is proud of the building slash renovation of Granby's elementary and middle school complex. The town passed a debt exclusion override to pay for this complex. This is the only sound financial path to pay for such a project, increased taxes to fund the long-term commitment. Years ago, Granby financed a large portion of its operating budget with monies from its landfill revenues and with money from its stabilization funds. In other words, ongoing expenditures were funded by temporary sources of income. Luckily, the town recognized the absolute impossibility of expecting this to work in the long term. Budgets were cut and overrides were passed. The impending crisis was averted and Granby learned that it could, in fact, live within its means. The Finance Committee hopes that a new crisis is not on the horizon. Thank you. The moderator now calls for a motion to recess the annual town meeting and call to order the special town meeting. Second. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All opposed? A quorum is present, so the special town meeting will now come to order. Madam Clerk, has the warrant been properly posted as required by the general laws of the town of Granby? So now the moderator recognize Mr. Bale to present the motion under Article 1. Kevin, this year, so I Kevin okay. Madam moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from uh, account 01-194-5480-0 to account 01-122-5301-000, the sum of $5,000 for the purpose of funding the Selectman's expense budget for 2017. Second. Any discussion or comments? Yep. Okay. Um, this money is for um, paying for, we hired a company to do our Medicaid? Medicaid, yeah, Medicaid reimbursements. Um, in general, this will be a savings, but we needed to put this money up before we um, got too far ahead. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? The motion under Article 1 requires a majority to pass. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call up Mr. Chernacki to present the motion under Article 2. Good evening, everybody. 
Uh, Madam Moderator, I move to I move the town vote to transfer from account 01194-5480-000 to account 01-151-5304-000, the sum of $9,000 for the purpose of funding the legal expense budget for fiscal year 2017. Thank you. Second, any discussion or comments? Do you have Go ahead, right here in the front. Can you stand up so they can see you? This has to do with Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. I'm just curious, does any of this money have anything to do with Aldridge Hall? Could someone tell us what the status of that project is? I know there are some legal charges uh, back and forth. I mean, what's the status of that building? Yeah. I can't. Come on. You got a lot for discussion? Wait a minute, I can't. Rich, uh, this $9,000 does not include any expenses regarding the Aldrich Hall issue, okay? And the current status is it is in litigation at this point in time. Any further questions? Over here to the right. Don't wait for the microphone, please. Thank you, Diana Peltieri, Karen Drive. If it's not in regards to that, then what does the $9,000 represent? Are we receiving council services for the town for a certain matter? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> the $9,000 has to do with a case that occurred during fiscal year 17 regarding a cadet officer that was injured at the academy that we required special counsel in order to defend the town. Any further questions? The motion under Article 2 must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Brooks to present the motion under Article 3. I move the town vote to transfer from account 01-194-5481-000 to account 01-491-5120-000, the sum of 11,000 for the purpose of funding the cemetery personnel budget for fiscal year 2007. Thank you. Second, is there any discussion or questions? It, right here in the middle. Uh, I'm uh, Matthew Kennedy, 75 East Street. I'm sorry, could you say that into the microphone? We couldn't um, hear you. 75 East Street, Granby. Uh, I, I'm new to this town meeting. Um, when it says 
the town will authorize, appropriate, borrow, transfer from, or bond. Is this, is this, uh, each one is different? You're reading the article as opposed to the motion? Yeah. The motion should be under that? Yeah. So each, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I read the wrong one. You're right. That's okay. All uh, right, next to him. Melissa Rickson, 133 South Street. I just have a question regarding this account 01194548100. Is that the stabilization fund or what fund is this account? Because it's on here a few times. That is our account that we have for gasoline purchases for the town. Due to the fact that we didn't use as much gasoline that was projected for FY17, I'm using the excess funds to cover this shortfall in another budget. It is not the stabilization fund. Rich has a question right here. Do you have a question? Stand up so we can see you. Yep. Rich Dumbaraki, Bachelor Street. You didn't explain why there was a shortfall in the money that you put the account in. What, what, why was there, why was it, where did it go, what was it used for when it got transferred to the other account? Why was that one overspent? Didn't you just answer that? Well, apparently, Kevin, Kevin, can you answer the question as to why we need the eleven thousand dollars? Okay. He can stand there. Mr. Brooks, wait for the microphone. I just I think he disappeared. I, got, I didn't know where he went. <laughs> I guess the short answer is uh, we're trying to maintain our equipment and also maintain the cemetery to a fairly high expectation by the residents of the town of Granby. Periodically, we do shift funds from one account to another to uh, make up shortfalls in one account that we have an excess in uh, another account. So it's Rob Peter to pay Paul. Thank you. Any other questions? In the back? I'm sorry, I don't know when the best time is to bring this up, so I'm a little off here. Uh, Deb Warinsky, 33 Easton Street. I believe that about 90% of the people here are probably for um, to talk about the school vote, and is there a way that we can move that along to be one of the next couple of articles? No, right now we're in the special town meeting, and the school budget question is in the annual town meeting, but we do not move that budget forward. There's an order to the articles that was presented by the select board, and we keep them in that order. So when will that article come up? Is that it will come up in a little while when, we, when we're done with the special town meeting. Okay, thank you. So in order for the motion to pass under Article 3, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 4. But before Chief Mitchell can speak, he is not a resident of Granby as of yet, so I need town meeting's approval to have him speak. So can I have a second? And we need a majority, so all those in favor? Thank you. Anybody opposed? Come on up, Chief Mitchell. Good evening, John Mitchell, Fire Chief, Town of Granby. I move to vote to transfer retained earnings, the sum of $35,000, for the purpose of funding the Ambulance Department Personnel Services Budget for fiscal year 2017. Second. Any discussion or comments? 
You need to stay up there. Uh, so the pur purpose for this motion is uh, to uh, take care of some shortfalls, well not even shortfalls, well, Town of Granby simply has had a significant increase in emergency response over the last year. And this money is needed to cover the unexpected uh, overtime or shifts that needed to be filled in order to provide the appropriate coverage for the community. Any questions, comments? For the motion to pass under Article 4, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call on Mr. Emirate Everin to present the motion under Article 5. Madam Moderator, I move the town to vote to transfer from account 01-333-5331-000 transportation to account 01-360-5326-000 special classes, uh, the sum of $60,500. Is there any discussion or comments? Do you want to speak to it? Okay. One minute. Oh, sorry. Um, this motion is related to transfer of funds from um, our transportation budget um, to, into the operating budget with the express purpose of supplementing the special education tuition. Uh, there's actually a conditionality that was that was discussed earlier. This is just to ensure that at the end of the year we do not have that gap in our special education budget. As you know, that is a fluctuating um, line item for us. If we do not need this amount at the end of the fiscal year, we will uh, let the town administrator and the select board know that the funds have not been used and return the funds. Any other questions or discussion? In order for the motion under Article 5 to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls for a motion to dissolve the special town meeting and call to order the annual town meeting. Can I have a second? All those in favor? Thank you. Anybody opposed? So now the annual town meeting will resume with Article 12. The moderator will now recognize Mr. Bale to present the motion under Article 12. Chief Mitchell will present the motion under Article 12. I move the town vote to appropriate as offset receipts fire permit fees in the amount of $1,420 for forest fire warden expense. Thank you. Second. Any discussion or questions? Up front. The microphone's coming. Hi, Tracy Learned, Lynn Drive. I think everyone assumes that there's going to be at least a one sentence thing about what everything is. Am I wrong? <laughs> so you would like an explanation yeah, after everything yeah, that's please. moved? Sure. Uh, 
so this money is collected as part of the uh, fees that uh, w we charge for uh, brush burning, whether it be agricultural or seasonal. That money we use to uh, do many things with it. First of all, it's used for the purchase of uh, protective equipment for the firefighters to wear when fighting uh, wildland fires or forest fires. It's also used for training of personnel for wildland firefighting as well as uh, it's, it's used to uh, provide public education regarding uh, forest fires and, and wildland firefighting. Thank you. Any other questions? In order for the motion on Article 12 to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls Mr. DeRosier to present the motion under Article 13. I move the town transfer from available funds the sum of $279,748 authorized under the Chapter 291 of the Acts of 2004 for highway construction and improvements defined under the Chapter 90 of the General Laws of Massachusetts. This is the uh, Chapter 90 money we get every year for road reconstruction. Last year we did uh, Green Meadow Lane, South Street, Ferry Hill, and Harris Street with that money. Thank you. I need a second. Any questions? Over here to the left. Taylor LaJoy, 160 School. Dave, what roads are earmarked for improvements this year? Because of the cuts last year, we had a third less in Chapter 90 money than we did the year prior. We only did half of Harris Street. We're currently finishing the other half right now. Um, we're looking at some other repairs that need to be done on East Street and uh, possibly Porter Street. Thank you. Any further questions? Over here to the right. Diana Peltier, 8 Karen Drive. How would someone go about getting a road that they wanted to be assessed for this in the future? Would they send you an email or is there some place that they would sign up for that in town? You can give me an email, but we pretty much keep a very close eye on every road in town. And we have a pavement management program that selects them based on traffic count need and how, how fast it's deteriorating. Obviously the side streets with less traffic don't get selected uh, as, a high, as, a, as high of a priority. However, we try to slip one in, like last year we did Green Meadow Lane, uh, because if we only followed the pavement management program, it would never select the, the, the smaller streets, because we, we aren't spending enough money on roads. In order for the motion to pass under Article 13, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Any Anybody opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mark Bale to present the motion under Article 14. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $175,000 for the purpose of funding the town's other post-employment benefits, also known as OPEB liability. Thank you. Second. Okay. Uh, the state in the last, I don't know, decade or so has been concerned about funding liabilities out into the future. Um, Post-employment benefits are basically health insurance for retirees. Um, and what the state would like us to do is to be able to pay 100% of that liability and have that paid for like right now that's not even close to being possible. Right now what we use is a system called pay as you go, which has traditionally been the system you know, from the start. And um, what we're doing is now is we're trying to start to accommodate the state's wishes by um, putting money aside for these other post-employment benefits. Um, the state would really like us to put millions in. Um, so this is not really close to what it's covering, but it's a show of good faith to the state that we're working on it. 
Any comments or questions? Up front, please. Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. So what is the total amount of the liability and how short are we currently? And do we have a long-term plan and what is the expectation? That was three questions. Hmm. Okay, Joe, we had an actuarial study done under this, what's called GASB 45, which is the legislation that is requiring us to determine that liability. The liability as of July 1, 2015 was 21253821. They under this regulation, GASB 45, they want us to fully fund that liability over a 30 year period. Every three years we have to go out and get a new actuarial study done to keep the uh, actual liability uh, determined. Under the last actual study we did, we should be putting 1,838,632 as an annual appropriation against this liability. The 175 is far short from that, but we have other uses for the money and we, can know we can't afford to put the full amount in. Thank you. Any further questions? So in order for the motion to pass under Article 14, it requires a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. Anybody opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now ask Mr. Bale to present the motion under Article 15. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $50,000 for the purpose of purchasing engineering services for an engineering study of West Street School building. Second. Go ahead. Okay. Um, presented this article last year. Uh, people have more questions about it than I could answer. Um, basically, as you know, we're going to be moving students out of West Street School and into um, the addition at East Meadow. That was going to leave us with a vacant building on our hands. As you know, the, um, basically the school wasn't, wasn't cost effective to um, do anything with that building as a school. It would have cost us too much money and it didn't, wasn't clear that the MSBA would give us any money for it. Um, so we have to figure out what to do with this building. Uh, we could, one thing we could do is um, try to renovate it. However, we would run into many of the same problems that we run into with renovating it as a school. We could try to um, sell it. We could try to, I'm not gonna make a joke about that. Uh, <laughs> um, we could also demolish it. Um, so our plan was to appoint a committee to um, basically investigate what our options were and figure out what the cost would be for each thing associated. We're trying to be proactive here because otherwise we're gonna have kids moving out of a building and we're gonna be stuck with this building that's unoccupied and not know what to do with it. Uh, as many of you know, because we've gone through this on many occasions, but we've paid money for um, studies. Uh, we have a study on West Street School, which we do expect will be helpful, but West Street School, they didn't go through and like open up all the walls and pull all the things apart and basically do some of the engineering looks, um, work that would need to be done for a more concrete price. Um, so that's where we're looking for the money. Um, the $50,000, I should say, would not necessarily be spent. Um, the money would be there for that committee to draw on as necessary, but if there is, if it's not used or there's not, um, it's not all used, it would just go back into the general fund. Question up front, right here. Hi, Tracy. Tra Tracy, is that Lynn Drive again? Sorry. 
so the following or the forthcoming articles say raise and appropriate as opposed to some of the early ones that say transfer. Does that mean, I was waiting because I want to see if you, does that mean raise above and beyond what's in the revenues or does it mean, you know, from existing revenues, tax revenue, yada, yada? Oh, okay, this is a commonly confusing thing, so please don't anybody be embarrassed by having asked that question. Uh, it's important and it's required by law that the select board um, have the, what's called the warrant, or the warning about town meeting posted. And the warrant articles, those individual things, give um, people who read them fair warning as to what's gonna be discussed. Uh, they get more refined when we get to town meeting and we read the motion. Okay, so when you see warrant, that was what was originally printed. The motion is what we're making tonight. Does that answer your question? No, what does raise and appropriate mean oh. as opposed to transfer? Oh. Is that current money or exist, you know, it says raise? Right. Yep. Okay, we are currently going to do the budget for July 1, 2017 to June 30th, 2018. When we say raise and appropriate, it's all our local receipts, which are your permits, state aid, and taxes. Except that that have already been raised. No, that will be raised effective July 1, 2017. Yes, ma'am. This is how we go about developing the tax rate for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay. Question in the front to the right. Diana Pelletier, 8 Karen Drive. I just have a question, if you could be so kind. Did we not do a study, I thought, three years ago on West Street when it was determined that the school could no longer be used for children? In my mind, I almost believe like we did. And if we did, why is it that we cannot utilize that same study for this project? Could you be so kind and speak to that, Mark, please? Yeah, as I, as I said previously, um, we did a feasibility study for West Street School. Um, a few years ago and uh, we actually that study built on a previous study from uh, 10 years ago um, but it doesn't cover all the things that we're going to need to do taking down walls looking at more closely at electrical and stuff feasibility study is not as specific as we would necessarily need so do you have a follow-up question okay We've done two studies for this building. We obviously have some idea of what the town um, has in mind of what they're going to utilize this building for, I would hope. Otherwise, we've probably spent $100,000 inappropriately, right? So my question is, I hear what you're saying, that you're hoping to, to glean more information, but what exactly are we hoping to glean? Whether or not there's asbestos in the building or, because a lot of times they can't tell that until they go in and actually open things up. I guess I'm just questioning, since the schools are in such, you know, disarray, I'm questioning every dollar as I would in my own home. Not, not to be a problem, but yep. I just want to make sure it's good use of our money. Right. Okay, Diana, what we're doing with this study is we are going to take a, an in-depth look at all the mechanical systems the heating system, the plumbing, the electrical system, to see if it's worthwhile renovating for municipal purposes. When we did the MSBA study, they identified major problems with the, with the, with the site. And they, we, the school building committee determined it was not a site conducive for children. But that doesn't mean it wouldn't be conducive for municipal offices if we put some money in it to renovate. What we're gonna do with this is see, do we wanna renovate the whole building, renovate part of the building, demolish part of the building, or dispose of it completely? This is what this study is gonna to attempt to do to find out if it has a municipal use or not. Question in the front right here. Amy McGreevy, 34 High Street. I just have a comment. 
I think the town has wasted enough money on buildings that they don't even know what they're going to do with when they have children in the high school that are badly in need of repairs as well. So at this point, to spend $50,000 in addition to what already has been spent, my personal opinion is the town is, is wasting its money. It's wasting our money. Thank you. Question over here. Joe Rakowski, Maximilian Drive. Um, I remember this last year, and I'm just wondering, one of the concerns I had last year was a committee hadn't been formed. Um, and I'm just wondering, in the last 12 months, did we formalize a committee, and who's the chair of that committee? Because I felt that we needed to have a committee formed to give direction to the study. So has a committee been formed, and who's the chair of that committee? Um, no, there's not a committee, and there was really no purpose in appointing a committee if they didn't have the resources they needed, basically, to do their job, which is why last year I should have said something differently than what I said tonight. Um, we can only appropriate money at town meeting. So if we appoint a committee, we were at appointed a committee last year, if we had not, um, we didn't appoint a committee until we had the resources for the committee to, to do their job, is what I'm saying. Question in the front here. Jennifer Bartos, 97 Porter Street. I'm just looking for some clarification. Are we saying that we need to spend the $50,000 in order to get clarification on how much it would cost to demolish the building, if that was the, the ultimate outcome? And what exactly would that $50,000 be used for that will be different information than what we've gotten from previous studies? Yeah. As Chris was saying before, the previous study addressed schools. Um, if you know building codes at all, and I, I'm not an expert, but I've learned a few things um, doing the building projects, you change the building uses and different building uses have different requirements. Um, and the requirements for, for a school are different than, say, for office space. So we need to look at things that way. We need to look at things more in depth than they did for the school thing. The, the, the purpose of the study for the MSBA, which the MSBA requires, is that is this school feasible to be used as a school? That's what they're doing. So they come up with a pretty good ballpark thing based on what they already know. They have formulas and everything to look at it. Um, this would look at any of the costs associated with bringing it up to, for office space or bringing it, you know, if we had to demolish it. Um, so. Thank you. Question right here. <clears throat> Madam Moderator, Dave DeRosier, 32 Bags Hill Road. It's not a waste of money to have a plan. Uh, when you close a building down, you just can't lock the door, stop heating it, and walk away from it. You need to know what you're going to do with it. Otherwise, you will not have an option in the future. If we walk away from that building, leave it unheated, the pipes are going to freeze, they're going to break, they're going to burst, you'll get nothing for that building in the future. We may not spend the entire $50,000. it will be up to a committee that's formed in the future. They may spend a portion of it but at least they'll develop a plan on what the town can do with the building and maybe get some money back from it, one way or another. If you walk away from it, it's gonna be like the old police station. There's three inches of mold throughout the whole building because the state didn't do anything. We walked away and there was no plan for that building. There's no choice for that building now. That building is gonna come down at some point in the future. The state will not be able to re, it won't, it won't be economically viable to re, repair that building. I'd hate to see that happen with the school. Question in the back. Hello, my name is Andrea Kennedy. I live at 112 Cold Hill. 
Um, I just have to disagree with you. I think that this money should be appropriated to demolish the building, as the police building should have been demolished in the first place. It was a house. It wasn't a building. That was a house. So I also want to just say that this is a waste of money. We know that that building is not viable. We know that for sure. Why don't we take that money and help demolish it and put that uh, property on the market and sell something because this town needs money that is a great property to sell it's perfectly located it's about two streets and I believe that it could be a good commercial value so anyways I believe that I just make a statement that this is a waste of money and I'm not voting for it thank you <clears throat> comment in the back Michigan Georgia from 144 New Edla Road. Um, I actually work in some of the office buildings um, in town, and we're in two separate buildings. Two heating bills, two electric bills, two repairs of everything, two for electrical. Why don't we just have everything in one building? Thank you. Comment in the front. Uh, John Pelham, 104 Munsing Ridge. Um, I don't think any of the gentlemen here that represent the town have said that we know that that building must be demolished. I think the point is to find out what we can do with it. And personally, I don't know anything about what the building, what its condition is, what can happen. Um, I think just the idea occurs to me that that would make a great town hall. Granby doesn't have one. It's got a house, old house in one corner of the town and it's got this metal building somewhere else. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a terrible situation. If somehow that building could be put to that use, it would be wonderful. So if there's nothing else to add, do you have something different to say? Okay, one more comment. Oh, oh. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Why isn't this $50,000 coming out of the stabilization fund? It's a perfect example of what should come out of that fund. It's a one-time item. It's non-recurring. Uh, why isn't it coming out of stabilization? Can you answer that? Uh, no particular reason. Um, there's, no, there's nothing special about the stabilization fund of the budget, so I don't know. I'm ready to vote on it. So in order, yeah, one more question. Thank you. Melissa Rickson, South Street. What is the date that the building is actually going to be vacant? I believe it's September of 2018. If that is true, then we have still another year and one more town meeting, so that $50,000 could be used for something else now and then appropriated then, and that'll give time for a committee, as someone else had stated. Uh, that, that's not actually how it works. We can't, it can only be appropriated for this. If it's not appropriated for this, then it will just go into the general fund. You can't take the money from one article and put it onto another because this is a budget instead of the stabilization. So um, you can either vote it up or you can vote it down, but you, this has going to have nothing, no impact on any other votes not, or votes on the school. It's, that's so. So in order for the motion under Article 15 to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? I need a count. I need the counters. Please put your cards down. I'm going to have the counters come out to actually count. So please keep your cards raised until I tell you to take them down. So all those in favor of the motion under Article 15, please raise your cards and keep them up.
All right, you can put your cards down. All those opposed, please raise your cards. Okay, you can put your cards down. The motion under Article 15 fails by two votes. The count is 94 and 92 against. The moderator will now call on Mr. Evelyn to present the motion under Article 16. It was 90 for the motion and 92 against the motion. So the motion fails. Am I good? Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It is 90, nine zero, who voted for the motion. So nine zero. And 92 people voted against the motion, all right? So therefore, the motion fails. Okay. Any questions on that? So now Mr. Everin will present the motion under Article 16. Thank you. Yeah. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $26,000 for the purpose of purchasing a transit vehicle for the school department. Thank you. Second. Go ahead. Discuss it first. Yeah. Um, this, this is to replace the van that you all may know that is in front of this school. And that van uh, typically used to transport students to activities, events, uh, many times to uh, sporting events, especially in the case of smaller groups like the wrestling teams. Uh, it, it is no longer passing inspection. We actually uh, waited until uh, we could no longer use that. It, it has become a safety hazard and it's not passing inspection. And for those purposes, and to be able to save money on uh, those types of transports, we are uh, asking uh, for this vote to purchase a new vehicle. Thank you. Any comments or discussion? To the right.
Diana Peltier, 8 Karen Drive. So Evren, can you tell us what year that vehicle is and how much mileage it has and what exactly it needs if it could be restored by someone in town? Hmm? I don't know. Okay. Can you answer that? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm getting some help. This year, the, the uh, vehicle that we're talking about did not pass inspection. The highway department did a lot of body work on it. It's pretty rotten. Um, Panel-wise, it's not going to last long, and it probably won't pass the inspection next year. I don't have the records on, on the vehicle as far as the year. Do you know the answers? No. I believe that that was... Uh, okay. Um, I'm not entirely certain, but I believe that was a donation to begin with to the school district. And unfortunately, I don't have answers to the questions that you're asking, the year or the mileage. Any further questions? So in order for the motion under Article 16 to pass, it must pass by a majority. So all those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator calls on Mr. Everin to present the motion under Article 17. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $45,565 for the purpose of purchasing a truck for the school department. Thank you. Second. Again, we have, um, this is a vehicle that we try to um, use for a longer term. This is an old vehicle. Uh, it is, um, it doesn't pass inspection. Uh, let me see my notes here. Uh, it does uh, a few things for us. One is we're using this vehicle to uh, plow snow when it snows, so it, it has that capacity, and it's not doing that. We have a larger lot now with the uh, new construction, and it's going to require... Um, this vehicle will do a lot more plowing. Number two, it transports some of the vehicles that we need for mowing purposes. It transports the trailer and tractor uh, with the mower. And finally, uh, this is part of our um, uh, savings program just for some of the uh, transfer of, of supplies and deliveries. We are using this vehicle. Again, as I mentioned, this vehicle is not passing uh, inspection. And um, it is... This, this is a uh, Ford, 2000 Ford uh, F-250. Thank you. Any discussion in the back? Michigan Church on 144 New Other Road. I have uh, two questions. One, I thought that uh, the highway department mows the lawn at the schools, so I don't know why you need a trailer to transport lawnmowers. Secondly, and our last vote, we voted to transfer money out of our transportation account to cover for other classes, but aren't these vehicles part of our transportation, so why didn't we use that money towards that? We're, it's a transportation, so why are we, aren't we using it for transportation? If we have that much money in transportation, why aren't we using it for transportation? All right. I will, I will um, briefly address the second part of your question, Michelin, and I'm going to turn it to Dave for, for the, uh, the details. Uh, this is actually a capital request um, uh, outside our operating expenses uh, or transportation, so it is coming from those funds. That's my understanding. Do you want to answer which one? Dave DeRozier, 32 Bags Hill Road again. I'm the highway superintendent. We do the uh, bulk mowing Michelin. We have the bat wing mowers that mow a 15-foot swat at a time, but we don't do any of the trimming up close to the school buildings or the uh, town buildings. So the, the town buildings are now a shared service with the schools. John Sullivan runs the building department, and he moves those mowers from site to site, schools and buildings, and does all the trimming and the, and the finer mowing. Uh, in terms of uh, the transportation accounts, we were talking about the other thing in a special town meeting. And in special town meeting, um, 
You might wonder why do we have a special town meeting, an annual town meeting, what's so special? Special town meeting deals with the fiscal year we're still in. Annual town meeting deals with any expenditures for the next fiscal year, which starts on um, July 1st. So basically the two transportation accounts are two separate accounts. Question to the right. James Guzman, Griswold Circle. So same question with the van, why is it not passing? It's a pickup truck, it's not transporting students. Um, I buy vehicles that don't pass inspection. I dump a few hundred dollars into them, they pass inspection. So not quite sure where we need $45,000 when we might be able to spend $4,000 on fixing it. Can you answer that? Dave, you want to answer that? The truck is bad. <laughs> it's it's rotten to the core. I don't know if you've ever tried to pull head bolts out of a out of a head of an engine block that are rotten. They break. They snap. What's what could be done when you're trying to change an exhaust system on, on that truck in normally a couple of hours for a skilled mechanic on a on a vehicle that's not rusted out is a week's job on a, on a truck where you break all the studs off and you can't put the exhaust manifold back on because they're, they're so rusted. These vehicles, like our vehicles, are exposed to road salt through the entire storms, much more than your vehicles are, personally. Um, they get old, they get rotten. We've done a bunch of patches on that particular thing. We had to weld up the manifold to get a sticker on it last year. All of our trucks have to pass DOT inspections Otherwise, they're not on the road. If you want to vote it down, I don't know how you're going to plow all the schools next year, but we, we assist the school department, but they do a lot of plowing as well. I know that question was brought up a, a minute ago. Question in the back. Donna Wiley, Meadow Glen Drive. Um, it's, if I understood correctly, Dave, we use that truck to take care of both the school buildings and the town buildings, municipal offices, is that correct? So how do we allocate the expenses for that? We've got so many unfunded expenses for the school department, and yet the schools are paying for a, a truck to take care of other municipal buildings. Uh, is there a way to allocate the expense so that we can really see who it's benefiting? Okay, Donna, what about, uh, I think it was last year or the year before, we voted to approve a public facilities department that is to take care of both school and town departments. That truck, along with a town truck that is used for maintaining both school and town buildings, it's a public facility department. It isn't used exclusively to maintain town buildings. The town has its own truck that it uses also to tow that mower between buildings for the school and the town. It's a public facilities department piece of equipment. Not just school, not just town. It's a shared services piece of equipment. Thank you. Wait a minute, I can't hear you. You have to wait for the microphone. Yep. Sorry, just to follow up, uh, is there a separate line item for the public facilities versus the town buildings and the schools? No. If you look in your budget, as we go down through, you're going to see a department called public buildings. That's where the expenses are for both the town and some of the school. And the school does carry some maintenance things inside their own budget, but at some point in time, those will all be melded into one department. If there's no further questions, we'll move on to the vote. We have a question over here. Uh, Dakota Richards, 28 Can you, do you mind standing, please? Thank you. Dakota Richards, 28 Parish Hill Road. 
uh, $45,000 truck. I'm just wondering what the specs are on the truck and do we need that much, um, you know, that many specs into the truck and has it gone for state bid? Pinch ending for John Sullivan tonight, sorry. Um, as far as I know, John is using a state bid price um, for that truck. I, I, I gave him numbers of various contractors that have state bids, and he can just select and budget that. That doesn't mean he has to go with the state bid. It means he's carrying enough money to purchase that truck. If he can put a bid out himself later and he, it comes in cheaper, he can award that to another entity. Uh, to add on to what David said also, uh, John went out on the state bid site, downloaded what they have for the type of, for an F-250 truck off of their specs, whited out all the dollar amounts that they had there, and handed it to a couple of local vendors who put prices in for the same items that are put through on the state bid list, and that's how he came up with the price. So in order for the motion to pass under Article 17, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Evren to present the motion under Article 18. Go ahead. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $60,000 for the purpose of replacing exterior doors at Junior Senior High School. Second. Uh, these are, as the, uh, the article says, these are the doors at our Junior Senior High School, and uh, these are safety uh, concerns because they're not always closing, and um, uh, they remain ajar, and we try to uh, fix the issue different ways. Uh, this is one. The number two issue was it, they're not ADA compliant, uh, and we have to make them ADA compliant, so this article is serving both of those purposes. Any discussion or comments? Right here in the front. Right here, Mr. Joyce. Thank you. Jay Joyce, 18 Jennifer Drive. I was just wondering at this, um, we do have that green community grant coming up for a quarter million dollars. I was wondering, can this be project be put off until we do that, or are we going to use taxpayers' money to do it now versus green community money, which we don't have to pay for later? I don't have the answer. Um, Chris? Do you know whether green community funds can be used for this type of project? Are they going to be energy efficient? I mean, if you follow the specs. Yeah. So that, that, that I'm going to pass on to you what I heard from Chris. Uh, this is not about energy efficiency. Um, this is safety and ADA compliance issue. From that perspective, it is likely not to be subject to uh, green communities funds. But I do not know the exact answer to your question. OK, so basically you're saying safety right now overrides energy. Uh, there's actually no mention of energy in our article. This is about safety and ADA compliance the way it is presented in the article. The safety comes uh, uh, up front because we do not want the doors to remain open or not to lock because it goes against our safety protocol as well. So that is our top concern. Uh, number two concern, obviously, it's a legal issue, which is ADA compliance. But your question is a good one, but I don't have any answer whether energy, energy compliance or energy efficiency is, uh, is part of it. So we have a comment over here, Terry. I think. Terry with Jerry 160 School. How many doors does this, are you doing every single door around the outside of the building? And how many doors is that? And would some of those, could some of those be put under the efficiency and do your primary doors that you're really having a problem with? 
first. Do we know how many doors? Okay, I will uh, turn to the expert on that one, to our superintendent. Does she need a, need yeah. a vote to start? Okay. Good evening. Uh, so the quote is for the parking lot doors, the exterior doors to the parking lot, for the gym doors, for the cafeteria at the lower level, for the front right main entrance, for a single gym door, for oh the cafeteria lower level I already said. So those are the doors that would be replaced. So it's not every door in the building, but those that are primarily a safety concern at this point. Did, did that answer your question, Terry? Wait for the microphone. Are there certain doors that are the real issue right now? How many of those are the ones you mentioned? And how much are each of the doors that would account for the $60,000? So we did prioritize the quote with doors that are a safety issue currently. And <clears throat> okay, the parking lot doors are 8,500 in the quote. The gym doors are 6,000, 8,500 for cafeteria lower level, front right main, uh, 20,500, single gym door, 6,000, cafeteria lower level, 10,000. Thank you. Question over here. James Guzman, Griswold Circle. In my experience, doors that don't stay shut, it's usually a latch. So have we looked at latch repairs versus, I mean, I haven't seen very many rotted doors. I haven't seen very many bent doors. So $60,000 in doors when we could probably spend what in latches, that might be a difference. Can you respond to what the problem is? Did you guys look at latches? I can read the actual, uh, you know, why the doors are an issue. Sure. So the doors that we are talking about are primarily doors that are part of the original building in 1963. As such, many of the door components are in a state of disrepair, do not function properly, and are a source of regular maintenance costs. And the doors serve many functional needs beyond sources of egress to and from the building. These needs include security for nearly 500 daily applicants occupants as well as protection and insulation from the elements. So if there's no further questions, there's another question. Go ahead, uh, up here. Uh, Rich Dunmaraki, Bachelor Street. How many bids did you go out to get and how many did you receive? Okay. Three bids out and three bids received. Three. Uh, question up front, somebody? Oh, okay, any other questions? So in order for the motion to pass, under Article 18, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. Thank you. The moderator now calls on Chief Wishart to present the motion under Article 19. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $41,046 for the purpose of purchasing a marked cruiser for the police department. Second. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead. As part of our um, vehicle fleet, we try to um, replace one vehicle a year. 
the vehicle that they were requesting funds for would be a primary vehicle, it would be a 2017 or a 2018 uh, Interceptor SUV. It would be replacing a 2013 Ford Taurus that would actually that has 90,000 miles on it, and it would be actually going toward to the uh, the, do the dog officer's car. The current car that the dog officer is using is a 2005 Crown Victoria with 140,000 miles on it. Uh, it's got a, a likely very substantial transmission issue, and there's some other rust issues with it as well. Um, in the end, we'll have the same number of cars we do today. Any comments or questions? In the middle here. Hi, Amy Gould, 62 Lyman Street. Um, I'm just wondering, and I know the police are doing an awesome job and we're really thankful for you guys, um, but I'm wondering with the certain restraints we have for paying for different things, if one new car a year is a good plan. And I'm also thinking that we could probably get a more reasonable car than 41,000 for the dog officer if that is a concern. Um, so I'm just wondering the car you're replacing if it is still efficient enough for you to use. To answer your question, the, uh, the one that we're replacing um, is the, the 2013. Um, in terms of the cost, just so you have an idea of what the cost in, the, in, in a vehicle, in a cruiser is, probably about 30,000 of that is for the actual vehicle purchase. The rest of that is for the items that have to be put into it. Radios, seats, cages, uh, sirens, lights, there's a, a ton of stuff. So when you see that $41,000 or so number, it's not a $41,000 vehicle, and I understand that's the overall cost. The vehicle itself was a, a Ford Explorer um, that's uh, um, enhanced to be a safety vehicle, a cruiser. So the actual cost is about 30. Um, to answer your question completely honestly, could the police department get by without a, a, buying a cruiser every year? We could. Uh, the reality of it is we would probably expect to see some increased um, costs in our um, repair and maintenance budget. So we have tried to stay ahead of it so we don't run into problems like we see with our buildings uh, that we're dealing with. Um, and that's the most honest answer I can give you. Does that, did I answer all your questions? Okay. Question over here. Um, Terry LeJoy, 160 School. What do you do with all the equipment in the Taurus? Do you strip that? Do you use it in another of the vehicles? That, I mean, the dock officer is not going to use that, right? No, and that's a good question. One of the one of the issues with the expense that we've had is, um, and I don't remember how many years ago. I'm going to say about three or four years ago, maybe a little bit longer. The um, Ford stopped making the Crown Victoria. And they went to uh, what is basically a Ford Taurus, which was a horrible idea because there's no room in it. And we bought one, uh, and it, it was basically useless because you, if, I'm not a big guy, but if we were to arrest somebody and I, and I had handcuffs on, you could not put, you, other than lay me down in the back seat, you couldn't get me in the back seat. So to answer your question, um, this would be the last year of where we would have to replace all the stuff in the SUV. Um, so for instance, if we were to, if we were to replace this vehicle now, the uh, equipment cost would be less in future vehicles because this is the last uh, sedan, so to speak. The rest are SUVs. So unless Ford makes some um, crazy body change to the, to the SUV, we'd be able to tr uh, um, transfer the equipment that's in the SUV to another SUV. But most of it, you cannot transfer from the um, sedan to the SUV. Any further questions? In order for the motion to pass under Article 19, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. DeRosier to present the motion under Article 20. I move the town vote to raise and appropriate 72500 for the purpose of purchasing a truck for the highway department. Second. Second. Okay, this is a, a Ford 550. Um, it's four-wheel four drive. It's one of our only four-wheel drive Sanders. Um, the reason we are replacing it is because it has a defective engine in it. 
The Fords no longer come with international engines. There was a big lawsuit between International Harvester and Ford years ago, a few years back. Uh, Ford now re redesigned their own diesel and they put their own diesel in because of all the problems in the, in the lawsuit with International. Uh, this truck has uh, the potential to blow up like our last one did. Uh, we traded our last 2004 pickup truck with the same engine and uh, the head gasket blew just before we put it in on trade. In order to change the head gasket on these trucks, you have to pull the cab off of it. And I do not want to pull the cab off this truck. I'd like to trade it while we can still get something for it, possibly, and get another one that's more reliable. Question over here to the right. Here, eight Karen Drive. So once again, I ask you, where exactly do we find a list of all of our equipment with all of its mileage, its current retail value, how many miles it has, and how long we've owned it, and when your plan is to turn the vehicle in? I see a lot of capital equipment tonight. If you could be so kind and answer those questions for us, I think that the I'm driving around in a 2004 Toyota Camry with 150,000 miles. I tout my son all over town, and we do just fine in it. Do I spend some money in repairs? Yes, I do, but I'm trying to be as physically responsible with the town's money and the taxes that I'll be paying for my house in town, and I'm just not sure everybody is looking as diligently at mileage what the vehicles are being used for and what the years are. Because 2013, it doesn't seem real old to me. 2011, 2009 even. And I'm just wondering why, why it is that we're always constantly trading in vehicles instead of working with local businesses like Dressels or our local auto body shops to actually maintain them, give our business back to the town and keep what we have in our town. Okay, let me try to get some of those. You, can, you asked a lot of questions. First of all, it's a 2006 Ford 550. Um, we didn't know there was a problem in the design when we purchased those, those vehicles. I mean, everybody that purchased one, I think pretty much um, now realizes there's an inherent design flaw in those engines. Um, believe me, I'm as frugal as the rest of the people in this room when it comes to repairing vehicles. And the reason we do a lot of repairs in-house is because our mechanics cost us $20 an hour and an outside mechanic cost us $100-something an hour and you need the software to work on all of these. Fortunately, our mechanic does have the software for the Fords and some of the small trucks. We've been doing our own repairs, replacing EGR valves regularly, replacing injectors on this truck, replacing the turbo on this truck. It has been a problem since day one with this, with this engine. It's a flawed engine. Uh, we've, we've put probably close to $10,000 in repairs in it. I do not want to spend another fifteen dollars If that engine blows tomorrow, you're looking at about a $15,000 repair bill. Question over here. Terry LaJoy, uh, 160 School. Uh, Dave, you say it's 72.5, but you're trading in. So is that the actual price of the truck, or is that the trade-in included? I don't know what that truck will bring on trade because of the, the widespread knowledge that the engine is defective. Somebody may purchase it. A backyard mechanic might switch the engine over. I don't know. The equipment is part of the expense, as Al just mentioned. We have radios, we have plows, we have uh, central hydraulic systems that run the sander. Um, all of that equipment has to go into the new truck. And the truck itself, I think that truck, when we purchased it, was only about 45000 And we're, we're already looking at potential going over the 50% mark in repairs on that original purchase price on the, on the base vehicle. So uh, economically, it does not make sense to hang on to some of these vehicles when it becomes cost prohibitive to do all the repairs. We can go into the uh, restoration business, but uh, if I've got all of my guys w working in the, in the shop on repairing trucks and rebuilding trucks, we're not going to be building roads. Question to the right. Steve Goodheim, Bachelor Street. Have you looked into alternative fuel resources for some of the town vehicles? Hmm. 
I've heard some horror stories of other DPWs purchasing electric vehicles um, for, for different odds and ends, running around meter readers and things like that. I have not per or looked into alternate uh, fuels as far as the, um, the larger trucks. This is uh, a 550 with 19,000 pound GVW on it. We use it to haul uh, pavers and rollers and uh, equipment to the job sites as well as sanding and plowing. Um, it is far more economical to run the diesels. We've, we've, with the little glitch in the Fords, we switched back over to some Chevys as a few years ago because I wanted to make sure that the Ford engines, after they were redesigned, are reliable. Um, so we're waiting to see that, and the money is in there for a Ford. But um, in, in, in answer to your question, I haven't priced up propane, for instance, um, usually it's more expensive to retrofit with propane, and we don't have the fuel uh, capability. The only reason I ask is because with the new uh, clean diesels, with the selective catalyst reduction system that's coming in all the new diesels, all those systems recently are starting to have issues. The six liter can convert into a liquid propane natural gas set up a whole lot easier than some of the newer systems. So if we maybe look into converting it, it burns a lot cleaner, a lot less pressure on the heads. Can I answer, answer that one more time? Sure. The town owns a, a large diesel fuel tank behind our shop. We fuel all the fire engines and all of our trucks on it. And that's the primary reason is for the fuel capability and refueling capability during winter storms. Having on-site fuel is um, the reason we haven't pursued that. We don't have enough vehicles to make it worthwhile. If we had trash collection where we were fueling trash trucks every week, it might be worthwhile to look into uh, alternate fuel source and provide a, a large tank at our facility. Thank you. One more question in the back. Uh, Dale Duke of Ferry Hill. Um, could it be green communities money put towards it because you're reducing your uh, your fuel cost? Um, and I believe to, for further green community to answer the eight Karen Drive question up there, all of your vehicles have to have logs in their fuel consumption uh, yearly. So that should answer your question that you were looking for with mileage. Can I respond to that? Go ahead. Where is it? Go ahead. The um, fuel standards are exempt over vehicles with 10,000 pounds, so that's an exempt vehicle. We don't have to comply with the requirements of the uh, Energy Committee. Okay, Diana, what we'll do, I'll, I'll canvas all my department heads to get the year, the number of miles and the purchase price, and then you can go forward from there. And what we'll do, we'll put it on the website once I have all the data together, okay? So in order for the motion to pass under Article 20, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Dave DeRosia to present the motion under Article 21. I'm handing it away before I needed it. I move the town to raise and appropriate 50000 for the purpose of developing a stormwater pollution protection plan, um, SWIP, and an operation and maintenance plan for town buildings in accordance with the EPA regulations. Second. This is another un unfunded mandate. Um, basically, there's new storm phase two regs that are going into a place, come in, into place effective July. By September, uh, we have to have a notice of intent into the EPA and DEP for a new stormwater discharge permit. Part of the requirements of that permit are that we have operation and maintenance plans and stormwater pollution prevention plans for every building, including the schools. 
If we don't have that, we are subject to large fines. Um, the reason this is on a, a warrant article standalone is because uh, the select board and Chris felt that this wasn't a part of my highway budget solely because it's for all buildings and then they decided to bring it forward as a warrant article. I have numerous issues that I have to deal with under the highway budget such as catch basin cleaning are significantly increased. We can no longer have any basins over 50% full. If they're over 50% full, we have to clean them more often. There is no number on how many times we have to clean a basin. We have to just maintain it below that 50% full and we have to provide all these records to the feds. Um, there are numerous other requirements of this permit. There will be some town meetings coming up um, because many other departments are gonna be affected by this, planning board, conservation, highway. Um, part of our permit requirement is to have these public hearings and explain to everyone all of the requirements that the feds are putting on us. Any questions or discussion? So the motion under Article 21 must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Bale to present the motion under Article 22. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $337,004 as it is a portioned share of the fiscal year 2018 budget for the Pathfinder Regional Vocational Technical High School District. Second. Go ahead. Um, we have 21 students currently attending Pathfinder Regional. Um, it's not just, we don't just send the kids there, we're actually part of the district. We have representation on their school board. Um, this pays for basically our part of the, the school district, including the transportation. Thank you. Any questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. So all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 23. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $349,811 to operate the Missile Solid Waste Department. Uh, and that $16,770 be raised from the Municipal Solid Waste Receipts and $333,041 be raised from the tax levy. Wages of $5,000, expenses of $344,811 for a total of $349,811. Thank you. Second. Can you speak to this? Sure. Um, this is this basically is going to fund our, our, our curbside uh, trash pickup. Um, as we know, uh, a couple years ago we had passed a an override, and this is part of the, the funding source for that. Thank you. Questions up front here? Uh, John Pelham, Munsing Ridge. Um, I, re I noticed we've changed uh, suppliers from Republic to Waste Management. Uh, I recall in previous meetings it was mentioned that our actual trash pickup usage in, in the past was much less than what was planned for, and we were hoping to renegotiate that for a lower amount, and I took it in my imagination to think that switching to Waste Management is the result of such a renegotiation, and we're paying less now than we were before. Is that true? Com is, is that reflected in these amounts? Right, the, our negotiation with waste management was, it, it was actually less than the, the previous contract with the company. It, um, the, the past uh, election we had an underwrite vote, which gave back money from that, because we, uh, we're paying less now. Uh, do you recall what the amount was for the previous year for this purpose?
comment back here. Go ahead and stand up. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Just to let that person know, last year we paid 365000 141 compared to 333,041. So we saved about uh, $32,000. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? In order for the motion to pass under Article 23, it must be a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Bale to present the motion under Article 24. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate $226,432 to operate the sewer department. Wages $10,560, expenses $158,597, debt $57,275 for a total of $226,432, and that $194,132 be raised from sewer receipts and $32,300 um, be raised from retained earnings. Thank you. Second. One to explain. Yep. Um, this doesn't affect actually most people in Granby, but town meeting has to authorize the ability of the sewer commission to um, disperse funds for, to run the sewer system that goes on um, mostly five corners up Amherst Street, and then we have a community septic system over on Smith Ave, Leo Ave. And so they basically, this is a fee for service thing. They actually pay for the service they get, and they pay a pretty hefty fee. Um, so this is just authorizing the sewer commission, which is actually the select board, to be able to spend the money on the testing and the maintenance and the things that need to be done. Thank you. Any questions or comments? In order for the motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 25. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to raise an appropriate $550,083 to operate the ambulance department. The breakdown of that comes to wages of $425,745, $61,670 for expenses, capital of $6,300, and a debt of $5,000, excuse me, $56,368. Again, for a total of $550,083. And that $314,853 be raised from ambulance receipts, $52,000 be raised from retained earnings, and $183,230 be raised from the tax levy. Thank you. Second. Can you just speak about it? So basically, this is our operating budget uh, for the year. It covers uh, everything within the ambulance department to include the full-time staff, EMTs and paramedics that are on. It covers our on-call staff. It also covers the uh, supplies and equipment that are required to uh, perform the operations of the ambulance department day to day. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion uh, right here in the middle? All right, 
Uh, Becky Alexander, 197 West State Street. Last year it was mentioned that they were, you were going to, or the department was going to look at appropriate billing for ambulance services and seeing if they were billing at an appropriate market rate. Was that looked at? Okay, to answer your question, uh, I've only been here three and a half months, and so I am not familiar with what occurred last year as far as that's concerned. Uh, certainly, if, if that's uh, desired, we can certainly look at that. But right now, we have to uh, uh, present what we're capable of doing for this particular vote. I'm, I don't mean to be contentious, um, but you came in from another department, so did you notice that the billing was comparable to where you came from or were we under billing insurance for so the other department that I came from was in the military base we didn't do EMS and it's completely different Thank you. any further questions in, in, in the middle here rich Rich Demaracki, uh, excluding the debt of 56368 for this year, your budget went up about $69,000 from last year, about a 14% increase. You may not be able to explain why, but that seems like a pretty high amount, $69,000. Oh, you can't. Okay. Uh, actually, I can speak to that. Uh, it's several reasons for the increase. The first and probably most obvious is we have had an increase in call volume for this community for emergency services. And in anticipation for an aging community, in anticipation for an increase in call volumes, uh, we have to be prepared to pay for everything that, that we have to do to perform our duties, whether it be our payroll, whether it be for the supplies and equipment that we have to replace uh, as we use. Um, it is a, a, a significant amount, but it is due to the increase in call volumes. Any other questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Libera to present the motion under Article 26. So before he presents it, I just want to let you know we're going to talk about item one separately, and then the rest of the items we're going to talk about in blocks. So right now we're just going to move um, Article 26, item line one. Thank you, Madam, <coughs> Madam Moderator. I move the town vote to raise and appropriate such sums of money as may be necessary to defray the expense of the town including debt and interest for the ensuing year, and to carry out any vote passed under this article. Item one, school department, personal services, $6,139,653. Expenses, $1,536,513, $536,513. Capital outlay zero, total of $7,676,166. $7,379,367 be raised from tax levy and $296,799 be contingent on the passage of the Proposition 2.5 override vote on June 26, 2017. Thank you. Second. You want to talk first? The uh, motion that I just read uh, consists of the following things. It is the required minimum state funding it is the $305,797 override from 2004, and it is 
and a new override proposed of $296,799, and that'll be dependent upon the uh, passage at the ballot box in, on June 26th. Is there any discussion? Mr. Em uh, Everin? Did you want to say anything for that? What? Did you want to say anything? No, but what? Because I'm not speaking to the motion right now. I'm going to make a statement. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, Mr. Everett's going to first make a statement uh, on behalf of the school committee, and then he'll speak to the motion. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mer Moderator. I will just actually say, oh, thank you. Uh, before I start, I will just let everybody know that um, we have a time limit, so if I speed up a little bit, uh, please uh, forgive the pace. Good evening, everyone. I stand on behalf of the school committee to ask for your support to approve the school budget items this evening. We have a budget gap of $691,000. This is a level service budget, which would allow us to continue the services we currently offer in our school district to our students. There are two major factors leading to our budget problems. I will start with state funding. Every year, the state tells each district the minimum amount of money they have to spend on education. That is called the required minimum school spending. State funding for education has been and continues to be grossly inadequate and insufficient. How do we know that? The state itself is telling us that. The process is old and doesn't account properly for the increasing cost of education, especially for items such as special education and insurance. A large majority of our state legislators are currently working to update the funding process, but it will take a little time to work. Because state funding is not sufficient, 90 over 90% of school districts across the state spend more than the state required minimum I mentioned earlier. The last two fiscal years, the state average for the amount spent beyond that minimum was 20% and 23.8%. During the same years, Granby's additional contribution was 6.9% in FY16 and 3.7% in FY17. There are, these are data from the Department of Education. Don't get me wrong, we do appreciate all your support regardless of the amount. That said, when we look at the neighboring towns, Belcher Town, South Hadley, Ludlow, and Hadley where we have shared services, um, we see that in Belcher Town the amount spent uh, beyond that minimum requirement was 11% in FY16, in Hadley it was 26% above, in Ludlow it was 23% above, and in South Hadley it was 18% above. We are told time and again that we need to generate revenue and remain competitive, and we would love to. But this is the reality we are living with. Now let's return, uh, let's turn to enrollment. The amount of funding we get from the state is primarily dependent on the number of students we have in our district. Our enrollment began to decline dramatically since 2011-2012 school year. And this wasn't all about population decrease. There were many factors that likely caused the decline. Some of the families who decided to send their children to other schools mentioned the lack of challenging classes and college prep programs. Some uh, thought the high school was going to shut down after the vote, of the vote to decline the high school building project. Some thought sports were getting eliminated. Others left because the special needs of their children could not be met in our district. This was the beginning of the vicious cycle that is continuing in today. Because students started to leave our district, we received less funding from the state the following year. Each time there was a shortfall in the budget, we reduced programs, services, staff, or all of them. That led to more students to leave our schools. The decline in enrollment resulted in less funding coming from the state, and you get the idea. This is a vicious cycle we are talking about. 
This year, there were over 140 students from Granby who chose to be in other school districts or other schools, 39 of them alone in Belchertown and South Adley. 71 students are in private schools, and granted, we cannot convince all students and parents to stay uh, in our school district, but even if we look at the 71 that we have somewhere else, if they were in our school district today, we would not be having, having this conversation that we're having about the gap we're experiencing. So what we are saying is that we need to fix the enrollment problem. This will, uh, this will help us stabilize our district, and then we can focus on attracting more school choice students as we did only a few years ago. On the flyers that you received, there are some examples of what we're trying to achieve that. Um, as I'm closing, I will, I will go with this. Schools are at the heart of our community. And what we're experiencing is a town problem, not only a school problem. This has been a lingering financial issue, and understandably, there is a lot of frustration around it. However, the solution is not to do more reductions. That will only cause a vicious cycle to continue. When we say cut positions, reduce programs, we are not talking about the few individuals you're seeing at this meeting. We're not talking about the school committee, and we're not talking about the school administration. This is about our children. These are the children you come to see at our concerts, at our plays, at our arts nights. These are the students you come to celebrate at graduations, just like you did last week. As they, we uh, uh, saw them uh, uh, make ac uh, academic achievements, and we saw the wonderful young adults that they have become. These are the students you see doing volunteer work across our community, helping the elderly and those in need as part of their school clubs like NHS and HOPE. These are the students you come to cheer as they succeed on the field, like last Saturday when our base, uh, boys baseball team played Western Mass Final for the first time in 25 years. Finally, our schools are the largest employers in our towns. Currently, 42 of our staff members are residents of Granby. Many of them are sitting among you this evening. We ask you to work with us and help us to turn this tide around. It is doable, and we need everybody to be a part of it. As always, hold us accountable, ask the tough questions, come to our meetings, give us your ideas and suggestions. But please, please, help Granby Public Schools to be the district that we would like to have for our children and for our grandchildren. Thank you. So is there any discussion or comments on item one? Up front here. Wendell Luff, 21 Taylor Street. Does that amount of money we put into per student include the new, brand new building? Have they put that money into that equation when they told us those figures? You want me to answer? Yeah. Are you asking whether the cost of the building is included in per student, per pupil expenditure? No, those are two different items. Question in the back. Yeah, John Matthew, 288 Taylor Street. Uh, I have a question on the numbers, uh, one from this book and one from the pass out sheet. Uh, I, I might be just missing something, but it says personal services 6139 and on this three year comparison for fiscal year 2018, it says 5,842. Uh, why is there a difference? Oh, I do have it. Do you need, do you need to see it? Yeah. Do you want to answer or do you need to see yeah. it? No, it's right here. Oh. Uh, the difference is the $296,799 that will be coming from the uh, override amount. Uh, we had um, scheduling problems. We had time uh, constraints on when the booklet had to go to the publisher. So there were a lot of things that were not known at the time when it had to go to the publisher. And one was which one of which was what the school budget was going to look like. So uh, when uh, there was a meeting on uh, May 16th between the finance committee and the school committee and the uh, select board, and at that meeting it was agreed that uh, $296,799 
would be asked for from a tax override on uh, June 26th. And so that money was put into the uh, personal services piece. Microphone's coming. Yeah. Microphone's coming. Uh, the difference isn't 296. If you, unless my my education is that isn't well, but if you subtract the two, it's uh, not 296. No, this is not the. Uh, no, I don't have it. I don't have it. Grab it from Chris. Um, somebody have the other yellow book. Just a uh, rough on a rough basis, uh, 6.1 million minus 5.8 million is $300,000. So you go to the rest of them, and you'll get the 296 for sure. Okay. Question in the back. My name is Kenny Hebert from Lyman Street, and I'm just trying to understand, you know. This first time being involved with where there's a two, two and a half override, and um, what happens if the two and a half override doesn't pass? Where's the two ninety six hundred thousand come from, and, and how do we deal with that? Well, uh, actually, for the school budget, um, they're in a special sort of circumstance, in that. For budget purposes and for presenting information to the town, uh, the amount is split out between personal services and expenses. But uh, the laws relating to the schools are actually a little different. Um, the only thing that amounts, the only thing that the schools uh, have to worry about is the bottom line that we vote for, and the bottom line that's allocated to them, and then they are free to allocate it themselves between uh, personal expenses and expenses any way they want. So that, in one sense, it really doesn't make any difference. I mean, they'll have to figure out how to do that. But in terms of what we do here, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, um, maybe I just asked it wrong. I'm, if, so we're asking for 7379000 in 296 uh, two hundred ninety six. Uh, thousand is contingent on a vote. What I asked was if, if it doesn't pass on the on the override, where are we going to get to? Where do, where is that two and a half two hundred ninety six thousand going to come from? Because it's not going to be it's not going to be part of the tax levy. Right. Well, what it will be is that instead of a vote, instead of uh, seven point six seven six million dollars allocated to the uh, school department. Uh, that'll be reduced by two hundred ninety-six thousand dollars, or roughly, uh, roughly uh, seven point three million, seven point three seven million, seven point three nine million. Then they'll have that amount of money instead of the seven point six seven six million. Does that answer your question, sir? Thank you. Any other comments, Mr. Joyce in the front? Yeah, after him. Jerry Joyce, 18 Jennifer Drive. Just as our chairman of the finance committee said, we're allocating the school so much money. It doesn't mean what they're telling us now is how they're going to use it, because they can reallocate it. I've been here for a lot of years, and I've heard the finance committee for a lot of years ask for a detailed proposed budget from the school so we can see where the money's going. We have no idea, as town residents, how the money's being spent from the proposed budget to the actual expenditures. So based upon that, I have to say, until I know where my money is being spent, 
I'm going to vote no on everything. Last year, the chairman of the school committee stood up walking around saying, this is a spreadsheet which is available on the school committee webpage. That is not true. I checked it every Sunday. It is not there. I even went to the town administrator to get a copy of this itemized detailed budget. He was told from the school department that that budget is unavailable. I want to know when the town residents are going to get a detailed proposed budget from the school and at the end of the year when the school is going to pre present us with a detailed actual expenditure so we know where the money goes. First of all, um, I, have to, I have to correct something that you said. Last year we had the detailed budget and I think Chris can attest to that. This, year budget, this year's budget was shared uh, with both the town administrator and the finance committee. So they have that budget. If you're asking for that, a copy of that budget, we can certainly provide it to you. And I would say next time, if you cannot find it on the website, if you send any one of us an email, we'll be more than happy to provide the same budget since it becomes public record the moment we mention it and we use it and we uh, share it at our own meetings. It's open session. Whatever we share becomes public record. The budget that I was showed for 2018 is a summary type budget. It does not get down into detail. For example, you got under facilities maintenance, $71,000. Well, I'm sorry, that's what I was showed. That's just an example. Okay, if you would like to verify it with uh, Chris or someone else, that would be, that would be fine, but uh, we shared whatever was requested. In fact, we asked for what was exactly being requested from us, and we sent to the town administrator, Chris Martin, and the finance committee what was exactly requested. Well, I haven't seen it yet, and I... Well, I would be happy to share that with you. The, uh, the woman sitting next to you has a comment. Amy McGreevy, 34 High Street. As a parent with a child in the Granby School District, um, uh, this has got to stop with th this person said and that person said, the future of our town depends on our school system. Whether you want to believe it or not, if you don't have kids in this town that go Amy, to this school Amy, system, could you direct your comments towards me? Oh, um, if people don't have children that go into the school system, whatever, but, you know, think about the town as a whole. Our property values, the entire town depends on a good, solid school system. And that's the reason why we're, I think, why we're in the predicament we're in now. Too many times the school I think has been short-handed and, and given the short end of the stick. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Farnier right here. Joe Farnier, 154 Taylor Street. In 1994, the town had negative free cash. That meant that we didn't have enough money to pay our bills. So you're here for the school, but here's a couple of economic issues. You're gonna to have to build a new building for seven to 12. You got less than 500 kids in grades seven to 12 in this town. You gotta to be willing to spend 125 grand per student to build that new building and facility. Sorry. And so my point is, is that I was told that we really have a deficit of 691. The reality is, is that everyone here has to be willing to pay a lot more on their tax bill to get the school system that you want on top of the building. So that's the economic reality. If you're not willing to ante up and pay another grand a year for the school system, then all of these arguments sort of go away and we really need to be looking at trying to find a way to ship a lot of our 7 to 12 kids out of town. So that's the economic reality for the school system. My question to the super there, or uh, uh, 
my basic economic question is, with the 296 that we're voting for an override, are you saying that that is still leaving us $691,000 short or less that amount? Moment to okay. make the motion or answer it first or make the motion? Okay. Question. Joe, that is the two, uh, 691, $691,000 is inclusive of the 296799 that we're talking about right now. There is a motion that I will be making right now to uh, propose the other side of it, uh, but that is part of the 691 that we're talking about. It's not in addition to it. So what motion are you making? Okay. Mm. And I will make that motion right now. Madam Moderator, I would like to amend the article related to the school budget to change the total amount to 8071166 I believe that's what it is, right? Through a transfer of funds from the stabilization fund in the amount of $395,000 for the purposes of covering personal services. <coughs> So, Mr. Everin has made a motion to amend item one to add an additional $395,000 to come out of the stabilization fund to increase the school budget to $8,071,166. Can I have a second? All right. So I need a motion now to stop debate on the main article and start discussion on the amendment. Do I have a motion and a second? So now what we have to do, we no longer talk about the school budget, we now talk about the amendment. Are there any questions on the amendment of the $395,000 coming out of stabilization fund to supplement the budget? Um, question in the back. Uh, John Matthew, 288 Taylor Street. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, uh, my personal opinion is this is outrageous. You can't uh, come up with this additional, mo additional money on short, on short notice like this. Why isn't it in the agenda here? Why isn't it anywhere? You knew about this for a while and suddenly you pop it up here? That doesn't make sense. That's, that is not professional. If you knew about that, you should have come up weeks ago and say, hey, I need another 400,000. But you did it tonight. That's unprofessional. That is not right. Do you want me to answer? Yeah, do you want me to tell me that, Superintendent? No, I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. Um, if, just a quick correction. I'm not the superintendent. I am the uh, chair of the school committee. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, the response to your question is actually this was determined uh, about a month ago or so and it was um, finalized at the joint meeting that we had with both the Finance Committee and the Select Board. My understanding is that th these uh, articles need to be filed a certain period before these meetings and that's why it's not in there. Otherwise this amount has been known for a while. That's why per our town meeting rules I am uh, making uh, a motion on the floor to amend the article. Otherwise, you are absolutely correct. If we had any knowledge or opportunity to include it in the books earlier, that would be the ideal case. Question in the middle here. I'll get you. Hi, Jessica Swistak, 97 East Street. <clears throat> um, I believe that um, just a couple of points, and uh, I believe that the uh, both dollar figures were um, in, in the newspaper, the stabilization, the motion that's just being made here, and the um, two and a half override. And then to answer the question from the man earlier, if we don't get the two and a half override, um, what happens? The flyer with the stated reductions, I think, was meant to answer that question, uh, and. So I think that that is a helpful handout to answer that. <laughs> Thank you. Please keep your comments and discussion right now to the amendment. Uh, over here in the front. Melissa Rickson, South Street. I just have a comment. We just voted to 
fund the students going to Pathfinder. That was 21 students and it ended up being about 16,000 per student. I'm estimating that we have about 700 students in our school. So at that amount, we are only spending $11,530 for the students who are staying in our schools, in our town, while we're spending $16,000 for them to go elsewhere. I don't understand why this is such a problem, why we can't spend $11,000 for the ones who are staying, and we're spending $16,000 for the ones who are leaving. <laughs> Again, please keep your questions and comments to the amendment. We are talking specifically about adding $395,000 to the school budget to come out of a stabilization fund. So we're not discussing the main motion right now. It's in the front here. Uh, John. John Pelham, Munsing Ridge. Uh, Madam Moderator, I apologize if my question is not on topic because I actually don't know what the topic is exactly or how my question might relate to it. So if it's off topic, I'll stop. Yep. Just tell me. This brochure talks about implications of reductions. It lists serious consequences, reduction in courses, increases in class sizes. It seems bad. Put the mic um, the, uh, this, this lists serious consequences, these reductions. Is that what we're talking about? If we don't approve this extra, we will have these reductions? Is that the, is that the issue? Yes, that is correct. Yep. Yeah. He's asking it. Yeah, again, um, to clarify, the reductions that you are seeing are for the, for the entire amount of $691,000. I don't know if you were asking that or not, but just wanted to make sure that I clarify that. Can you bring the microphone to him? I thought we were discussing uh, 391,000. We're discussing. Is that what you said, 391? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah, so I'm sorry. This was for nothing, it w I understand. You want me to explain? Yes. So the, the total gap is $691,000. Um, there were a lot of discussions as to how, to how to request funding for that. The reason why we split it the way we did, it's actually, it goes back to some of the conversations that we had earlier related to the, um, uh, to the free cash and stabilization. Whether or not we can, for, for the time being, um, allocate some of the funds th that come through free cash and go into stabilization to stabilize the school district. The other side of it was how much, how much should we go for on override? As everybody so far mentioned, override is, has direct tax implications for the town residents and we tried to keep that at a minimal. That's why it is under $300,000. But the combination of those two, which totals $691,000, that, that corresponds to the, to the uh, reductions that you are seeing on that handout. Question in the back. James Guzman, Griswold Circle. All right, so I'm a little confused. We got $691,000 plus $395,000 or the 395 is part of that. And a second part, what's our, our tax hit for the 295,000 that would be voted on for the override? Okay. So, uh, James, the first, uh, the answer to your first question is no, 295, 296, 799 plus 395, together make that 691. So 395 is not in addition to the 691 that we talked about. It is part of it. There are two pieces. One is 296, the other one 395. Um, the unofficial answer to, uh, to your second question, and you know, other folks may have other answers. The rule of thumb, I believe, is for every, every $100,000, it's one percentage uh, increase to, to taxes. So it would be about 2.5% uh, to 3%. Uh, can you, can you, yeah. Yeah. To, to answer your question, if you take the 296,799 and divide by the town's current value, 
of $619 million. It comes to 47.9 cents per thousand. So 48, say 48 cents per thousand. On a $200,000 home, that would be 200 times 0.48. So it would be about uh, 96, about 96 bucks per year. Question in the back? Okay, after this. Madam Moderator, thank you. Brian House, Shell, 511 Amherst Road. Madam Moderator, will you ask Chris, uh, please, what we have in the stabilization account that he wants to uh, take this money from? Yes. Okay. Brian, to answer your question, we have three stabilization funds. I was just c clarifying with uh, Emery. He would take it out of the general purpose stabilization fund. That currently has a balance of $766,682.62. Madam Moderator, will you ask that gentleman, please? What we generally use that particular stabilization account for? That gentleman being Chris? Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're talking about Emory or you. When you were a selectman, Brian. Yes, sir. Hmm? Many years ago. Thank you. We used to use it for non recurring expenses. That was the reason for the stabilization fund. You would put money in it to cover one-time type of expenses so that you wouldn't have to have the tax rate be fluctuating up and down dramatically. That's what the stabilization fund is to do, is to stabilize the tax rate so you, it just goes at a steady rate instead of having dips and spikes. Mr. Libera wants to speak to some of these questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are a couple of issues here, and I'm going to speak to both of them. The first is I want to give you a way to think about the amount of money involved um, by using an analogy that you might be much more familiar with. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned uh, early in my uh, remarks that uh, if we look the difference between 2010 and 2017, uh, the cost per pupil mandated was $8,104. If it had gone up by the inflation rate, it would have been $8,978. Instead, the mandated cost by the state was $12,367. Let me give you an analogy in your own life. Suppose you bought an automobile in 2010 and paid $24,000 for it. All right. And you want to replace that automobile in 2017. Inflation has been about 11% total over those years. So if you got that automobile for $26,590, that would be about what you would expect to pay in your daily life and the economic conditions that we all face. But instead, it turns out that the government runs the automobile business. So they said you can't have that for $26,590. You've got to spend $36,626 for that automobile. That's the increase, the equivalent increase of the uh, $2.56 million that we're spending at the minimum over what inflation does. But beyond that, beyond that, your local dealer has said, that's not quite enough money. I can't survive on that extra $10,000. I need another $2,600. The automobile is going to cost you $39,337. That's what the effect of adding the $691,000 is on top of the, the uh, minimum required. Now, second thing is stabilization fund. Finance Committee spent a lot of time talking about the school budget. We spent time with the school committee. You heard them tonight. We have never once heard any plan other than this $395,000 is needed there in the schools. Where is it going to come from? 
This should be an override amount. If they want to amend their amendment and have this come from an override amount, then we say, okay, that's the proper way to go about doing it. You take out a stabilization fund, you heard the figures there, in that stabilization fund, there's twice what they have in here. So we would come back next year and ask for the same amount or more, stabilization fund's gone. What are you gonna do about the schools? I think the th key thing is, we can't discuss it here tonight, is that this notion of level service is absolutely silly. You just can't do it without having tons and tons of money raised additionally each year. Instead, you have to go back and you have to take a look at what the size of the schools are, what the, skies, what the size of the classes are, and make some kind of decision about how you educate those children within the budgets that we have, or how you work out some system with other school systems to educate the children with those costs. I urge you to vote against taking this money out of stabilization fund. Thank you. Go ahead. Madam Moderator, uh, as someone with a graduate degree in economics and uh, as a uh, finance professional, I love getting into these uh, uh, exercises. The fact of the matter is the amount, as I mentioned earlier, the amount a town has to, must spend at a minimum for its uh, education system is determined by the state every year. All these exercises around CPIs and inflation rate, beautiful, we can have that conversation. It doesn't apply to the calculation. In fact, we all know you probably experienced the same thing. There are two main items that are causing some of our problems. One is special education, which is a fluctuation uh, line item for us, because we don't know who's gonna need services, who's gonna leave, who's gonna come. We, have, we, we can't always account for that. Number two is insurance. You probably all know that's the, one of the hottest topics in our country right now. Insurance rates are not keeping up with inflation. If you know any one of you uh, uh, know uh, something that keeps up with inflation in terms of insurance, that would be great to, uh, to find out as well. The, the, the challenge here is this. We are having two different narratives. We spent a lot of time looking into what the other towns are doing and why. I personally spent time speaking to school committees and their chairs in our area. They are not typically having this conversation. What they are doing, they're having this conversation prior to the town meeting, reach some agreement and go to the town meeting with a balanced budget. In our case, we're, we're having these discussions as if there's a school committee and there's everybody else. School department is part of our community. School department is part of this town. School department has people who are employed. School department has our children. And at the end of the day, we have to get to that narrative. But as we get to that narrative, we also have to remember, some things that I shared earlier with you are not my own thoughts or personal opinions. We know for a fact that the state knows the funding formula is insufficient, inadequate. That's why they're working on it. I mean, you can just Google it any which way you want and you're gonna find a lot of example of that. So as much as I appreciate this conversation and as much as I hope that our dialogue with the Finance Committee and Select Board will continue to, uh, to find different ways to address our problem, we have to address this problem as a town problem and all together. A uh, question over here, Mr. Rakowski. Thank you, Joe Rakowski, Maximilian Drive. Um, so, I am going to speak to the issue, and I'm going to ask. I'm going to just make a comment. It's not a question, but running a school district, running a public school district, is incredibly challenging in this day and age. And running a small school district is even tougher. And I think. Um, we don't celebrate the people that, and actually it's about our town too, we don't celebrate the people who volunteer and give up a lot of their time, whether it's the school committee or the finance committee or, or all of the committees, we don't celebrate enough. And we have a lot to be proud of in our schools. And at the end of the day, it costs money. That's the bottom line. And you're gonna pay it one way or the other. P parents who have children in the school district, um, people who don't have students in the school district and parents who live outside of the school district, they look at how you fund your schools. 
And I'm telling you, when we missed the vote eight years ago, there were a lot of reasons, a lot of good reasons for it, but we saw kids leave. And that's why we're in this situation today. So if we don't step up and take care of this, and I think they put together a very creative plan of taking some money out of stabilization and some out of a small tax override, it's gonna be detrimental and there are gonna be draconian cuts. And it's gonna be painful, and you are gonna pay for it one way or the other. Because when students leave the school district, the people that stay have to pay more for the fixed cost to run the school. So you pay for it one way or the other. It's that simple. And I think they put together a very, very creative solution. I'm not saying it's the best, but it's pretty damn good. A Little bit out of stabilization, a little bit out of tax override. And you can decide tonight, and it's gonna to be very simple. You vote this thing down, and everybody in the region is gonna look and we are gonna lose more kids, and then we gotta cover the cost in subsequent years. So I recommend you vote to approve the amendment and the, and the, uh, the override on the 26th. So both Mr. Libera and Mr. Evren have asked me to move the question, which means they wanna halt discussion on the amendment and vote on it. So in order to move the question, I need Do you have something to say that hasn't been said already about the amendment? Okay, we will allow a question. Go ahead, Mr. Fernia, and then and then um, Mr. Guzman. Okay. And then I will vote to move the question. Uh, Rich Dumaraki. Madam Moderator, first of all, I think it's very unfair. You let Emery speak for like 15 minutes. No. Emery had five minutes and 30 seconds. I had a clock on him. Okay. First of all, uh, Saturday in the newspaper, there was an article about students protesting budget cuts. If you looked right next to that article, there was another article that said state bond rating downgraded. And they said the main reason was the failure to rebuild its stabilization fund. Governor Baker said he was ending the practice of drawing down reserves or stabilization funds to pay operating expenses. Now the school committee has been asked for several years to come up with a solution to end their yearly deficits. Now at a public meeting, the school committee said their solution was to wait a year or two to see if the state would pass the millionaire tax. And if the tax was passed, maybe they would get some money. Now that's really not a solution. The budget articles include seven other articles that relate to the school of $1.6 million. And just retirement and health are over a million dollars. In the total school budget, is around $12 million. We only see part of it here, but there are other items that make that up. Now, people mentioned the $805,000 that's being paid for the bond this year and for the next 25 years. So the tax bill for everyone here will go up three to $500. Now, what should the stabilization, be fund, stabilization fund be used for? One-time items. It's said that the select board is considering one to two million dollars of the stabilization fund to pay off the school bonds early. And that's a great idea because it's gonna save the town thousands of dollars in interest. West Street School, what's gonna to happen to that? Refurbish it or demolish it? Very expensive. That's all money that should come out of the stabilization fund that's needed for, for that purpose. So we gotta look at sewer projects, Aldridge Hall. So there are a lot of things that, that that stabilization fund should be used for. And I agree with the Finance Committee. Let's support the Finance Committee. I don't begrudge the school committee trying to get an additional $396,000, but it should be a town override. That way, if it passes, they'll get that money forever. They won't have to come back here every year and ask for uh, money out of stabilization. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Mr. Guzman. It's 
It's a very simple question for our uh, finance committee gentlemen. How long can we continue to support the schools from the stabilization fund before we go belly up? Okay. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Martin I gave a figure for the amount that's in the um, general purpose stabilization fund, and it's about twice what's being asked for here, a little less than twice, if I'm correct. Um, there are two additional stabilization funds uh, basically for uh, capital purchases. So we'd have two years, this year and next year, at the $395,000, $400,000 level. Well, that's what our question has always been from the Finance Committee. What happens after that? Uh, something has to be thought of for a plan. and. Since this can't last, why are we waiting till we run out of money before we figure out that it can't last when we know ahead of time that it can't last and we're going to run out of money? So in order for me to move the question, I need a second. And we need a two-thirds majority. So all those in favor to move the question, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? So we will be moving the question and voting on the amendment. So to refresh your memory, right now we are voting on adding this to the main motion. We're going to change the total amount to $8,071,166 through a transfer of funds from the general stabilization fund in the amount of $395,000 for the purpose of covering personal services. In order for this amendment to pass, it must pass by a majority. So all those who would like this amendment to be attached to the school budget, please raise your cards. I have a point of interest. Uh, uh, no, we are just voting on whether or not we're going to add the amendment to the motion. And then when we vote on the actual motion as amended, it will be a two-thirds vote. So right now we need a majority to add the amendment to the main motion. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Vice Not right. Yeah, we will be. But that's, I'm not going to confuse them. Thank you. All those opposed? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the counters to come out. So we're going to have a count. So again, all those in favor of the amendment being added, please raise your cards and keep them up so the counters can see you, and I will tell you when to lower them. You can put your cards down. All those opposed, please raise your cards. Much clearer. I don't know. It's, it's 
two thirds is half. No. It's a majority to get it added, but then when we vote on the budget, your portion. Oh, put it down. Steve. Put it down. You can, you can put your hands down. So the amendment is passed. It's added to the motion. The count was 125 to 57. So now we will begin discussion again on the main motion as amended. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yes, when we get to the voting, we'll talk about that. Does anybody have any comments on the main motion as amended? Mr. Joyce in the front. Jay Joyce, 18 Jennifer Drive. It's my understanding from the combined meeting on the 16th of May, which was held with the select board and the finance committee, that it was stated, even if we pass this this year this way, it's going to happen again next year. Is that a true statement? Who's going to answer that? All right. Uh, to, to some extent, it is likely to happen. Not at this magnitude, hopefully. But to, to be very honest and realistic with you, we're not, we're not offering a magic solution that from today to tomorrow will change everything. In fact, that's, the, that's what I was trying to convey, that we have to really sow the seeds that will allow us to make these improvements to stop the enrollment uh, decline, and then we can work on school choice. But that we're dependent on that. I, I agree with the Finance Committee. Instead of going through this every year, was get a solution, get it fixed, and let's move on. So I am with the Finance Committee in saying, if this is what the school really needs, and they can show a detailed budget on the actual expenditures, then we should do it once and for all and get it over with. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Further questions? Thanks, right up here. Joe Farnia, 154 Taylor Street. Um, the budget has to be balanced. I'm opposed to the way it's funded, but I'm still going to support it. But in reality, we should be going for a $691,000 override, and we should all be paying more taxes to right the ship. So I don't see any further questions or comments. So, in order to vote item one, we are going to split the vote, and I will have Attorney Ryan come up and explain the process of bifurcating, because by adding the two-third, the stabilization fund, you're adding a different type of voting component. So Mr. Ryan will explain that, and then we'll proceed with the vote. Thank, thank you, Madam Moderator. My name is Ed Ryan. I'm the town attorney. As the moderator just indicated, by virtue of the discussion and the vote that you've just taken over the last half hour or 40 minutes, uh, we've added a, an additional funding source to the main motion. And that is to take $395,000 out of the general purpose stabilization fund. The law in Massachusetts is that whenever you put money into a stabilization fund or you transfer money for money out of the stabilization fund, it requires a two-thirds vote. In discussion with the town moderator that this was a possibility this evening, I suggested that it may be wise and have merit to bifurcate or separate the vote on the main motion as amended. 
if the main motion was not to get a two-thirds vote, uh, it would, in effect, uh, create a real problem come July 1 uh, in that the school department would have zero dollars for their operating budget uh, for the fiscal year beginning July 1. So it's my suggestion, and I think the moderator is willing to follow it, uh, that the meeting here consider the main motion as amended in two separate votes, voting for the $395,000 transfer from the stabilization fund separate from the balance of the $8,071,166, which would only require a majority vote. Ed. Yes. So we will first vote on the $395,000 to come out of the stabilization fund. That requires a two-thirds majority vote. So all those in favor of taking $395,000 out of the stabilization fund, please raise your cards and keep them up as I will have the counters count to make sure we have a two-thirds majority. Well, it doesn't matter. It depends on how many people vote. But it's like 200 and I wrote it somewhere. You can put your cards down. All those opposed to taking money out of the stabilization fund, please raise your cards. lower your cards. The vote was 120 for stabilization to 60 against it, which means the stabilization passes. 
exactly by two-thirds. One twenty four stabilization, sixty against. Are you checking my numbers? Thirds, all you do is take the vote and multiply by two. It's more than that. Yeah. I know, but wait, let me get the rest of the vote in. Yep. So now we'll vote on the second half of item one, which needs to pass by a majority. So, all those in favor of the rest of the school budget money coming out of tax levy and a Proposition 2.5 override, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? So item one passes by a majority. So I will now ask Mr. For the rest of the items under the budget, we will read them in blocks of four, and we will vote on them individually. So the next four items will be read all at once, and then you can discuss any of those items until we vote. So Mr. Libero will now present the motions for items two through five. Do you want this? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Item two, same motion. You know what? We'll take a... I will take a one-minute recess while people leave the auditorium and wait for the people who are staying to go over the rest of the budget. Now meeting with items two through five. Go ahead. Oh, that's yours. We are now resuming town meeting. Can I please have silence? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, same motion. Item two, school department transportation, $724,110. Item three, same motion, the moderator, salary $175, expenses $75, total of $250. Item four, same motion, the selectman, salary $9,507, personal services $188,559, expenses $129,084, Capital outlay, $5,000, total of $332,150. And uh, item five, same motion, finance committee expenses, $1,780. Thank you. Can I have a second for all those items? Is there any discussion or questions yes. on item two? Yes. Okay. Uh, item two has uh, been reduced by the uh, $60,500 that uh, wasn't needed for the school transportation this year and was transferred out of that uh, budget item into the other schools portion. So that's that's what's been subtracted from here. Uh, what this means is that the uh, transportation amount is uh, about forty-four, forty-five thousand dollars more than what the actual expenditures were for our fiscal year seventeen in this budget. Uh, the rest of them, I think, if you have any questions on, I'm glad to answer. Is there any questions on items two, three, or four? Or five. Do we have a question over here, Micheline? Uh, Micheline, 144 in the middle. It's just a clarification because you were explaining how we transferred the 6000 from, you know, to make up the difference. Did you already make up the difference for the new fiscal year or you added 40? That's where I got a little confused on that clarification there when you said 40,000. Uh, the previous vote of the special town meeting was for this current fiscal year had nothing this is the budget for the upcoming fiscal year yes we took this sixty thousand dollars out because the school committee had but there's still forty four thousand dollars more in the budget than there was in the net budget for last year any further questions 
So we will vote on each item separately, and all of these items require a majority to pass. So all those in favor of the motion under item two, please raise your cards. Thank you. Anybody opposed? The motion passes by a majority. All those in favor of the motion under item three, please raise your cards. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Item three passes unanimously. All those in favor of the motion under item four, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item four passes unanimously. And all those in favor of item five, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? The motion under five passes unanimously. And Mr. Libero will now present the motions on the, of the items six through nine. Thank you. Item six, same motion, town accountant, personal services, $22,500, expenses, $26,950, a total $49,450. Item seven, same motion, the assessors, salary, $10,884, personal services, $36,128, uh, expenses, $17,749, total $64,761. Item 8, same motion, town treasurer, salary $48,936, expenses $6,400, total $55,336. And item 9, same motion, tax collector, salary $42,593, personal services $10,000, and expenses $21,571 for a total of $74,164. Second. Second. Are there any questions on items six, seven, eight, or nine? We have a question in the middle here. Renee Fontaine Kennedy's on East Street. I just really have a quick question. The personal um, expenses or this personal services, can you just explain what I can't that, hear you. The, can you just explain what that is, the personal services or the personal um, expenses? On any of those items? Yes. Um, some people are salaried and some are uh, work on a different basis. Um, they're not salaried employees or uh, so the salaried employees uh, that's what their compensation is. Um, and uh, for example, with the uh, select board, the salaries are the total salaries of the three select board members, and then the personal compensation is the compensation of all the other people who work for those offices. Thank you. We have a question in the back. Good evening, uh, Greg Leonard. I'm on the board of S assessors. Um, in our budget, we have personal services listed out as um, a combination of our salary and the inspections that we are required by the state to do. Um, that just gives you an example. Um, we've been doing cyclical inspections, intruding on people's lives every six years to the two to $15 per parcel. Thank you. So in order for each of these items to pass, they must pass by a majority. So we'll start with item six. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item six passes unanimously. For item seven, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item seven passes unanimously. For item eight, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item eight passes unanimously. And all those in favor of item nine, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item nine passes unanimously. Mr. Glessman will now present the motions 10 through 13. Madam 
secretary. <laughs> moderator? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Moderator yeah. sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> Same motion. Personnel board expenses, $500. Item 11, same motion. Town clerk, 52,158. Salary, personal services, 2,900. Expenses, $2,355. For a total of $57,413. Item number 12, same motion. Board of registrars. Personal services, $2,000. Expenses, $25,000. $575. Now, item 13, same motion, Board of Appeals, expenses, $1,580. Thank you. Second, is there any discussion or questions on items 10 through 13? Each one of these items requires a majority to pass. So all those in favor of item 10, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item 10, passage unanimously. For item 11, all those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? Item 11, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 12, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item 12, passage unanimously. And for item 13, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item 13, passage unanimously. Mr. Glessman will now present the motions under 14 through 17. Item 14, same motion, public buildings. Personal services, $111,542. Expenses, $426,298. Capital outlay, $24,500. Total of $562,340. Item 15, same motion, police department. Personal services, $930,822. Expenses, $47,900. Capital outlay, $12,500. Total, $991,222. Item 16, same motion, auxiliary police. Expenses, $1,720. Item 17, same motion, dispatch, personal services, $202,780, expenses $33,104, total $235,884. Thank you. Second, are there any questions on items 14 through 17? Uh, we have a question over here, Diane. I just have a question on the auxiliary police of the 1720 what does that exactly represent? Because it was, you know, we've asked for police officers at different times, and I didn't think this existed anymore because we had to go through contracted um, unions. So I'm somewhat. Yep. Want to answer? Diana, to answer your question, the Auxiliary Police is a um, volunteer organization. Uh, the money that you're voting for in regards to that, uh, most of it is related to um, ammunition to get to keep them certified. Um, so that uh, that's the majority of their of the budget. Is that's why it's all expenses. You're welcome. Thank you. Any further questions? So again, each one of those items has to pass by a majority. So all those in favor of item 14. Thank you. All those opposed. 14 passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 15? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 15 passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 16? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 16 passage unanimously. And all those in favor of item 17? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 17 passage unanimously. Mr. Wilson will now present the motions, eight, um, the items 18 through 21. Item 18, same motion, fire department, personal services, 136,500, expenses, 42,850, capital outlay, 30,850, total, 210,200 dollars. Item 19, same motion, inspections department, personal services, $49,807, expenses, $22,805, total, 
of total $72,612. Same motion, uh, item 20, same motion, preventative inspections, Board of Health, personal services, $11,220. Expenses, $3,132 for a total of $14,352. Item 21, same motion, sealers of weights and measures, expenses, $2,730. Second. Are there any <clears throat> questions or comments on items 18, 19, 20, or 21? So each one of these items has to pass by a majority. All those in favor of number 18? Thank you. All those opposed? Number 18 passes unanimously. All those in favor of items 19? Thank you. All those opposed? Item 19, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 20? Thank you. All those opposed? Item 20, passage unanimously. And all those in favor of item 21? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 21, passage unanimously. Mr. Wilson will now present the motions for items 22 through 25. Item 22, same motion, emergency management expenses, $8,272. Item 23, same motion, highway department, personal services, $327,319. Expenses, $109,900. Maintenance of roads, $212,600 for a total of $649,819. Item 24, same motion, snow and ice control, personal services, 84,479, expenses 44,000, maintenance of roads 119,700, capital 16,000, for a total of $264,179. Item 25, same motion, cemetery, personal services 20,300, expenses 2,960, capital zero for a total of $23,260. Second, any questions on items 22 through 25? All these items have to pass by a majority. All those in favor of item 22? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 22 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 23? Thank you. All those opposed? 23, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 24? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 24, passage unanimously. And all those in favor of item 25? Please raise your cards. Thank you. Anybody opposed? Item 25, passage unanimously. Mr. Cannon will now present items 26 through 29. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Item 26, same motion, Board of Health, salary $2,811, personal services $25,298, expenses $8,604 for a total of $36,713. Item 27, same motion, Council on Aging, personal services $93,582, personal services $4,233, expenses $4,233, total $97,815. Item 28, same motion, senior lunch program, personal services $18,866. Item 29, same motion, veteran services, expenses $60,000. Thank you. Second. Are there any questions on items 26 through 29? Each one of these has to pass by a majority, so all those in favor of item 26? Thank you. Anybody opposed? Item 26, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 27? Thank you. All those opposed? 27, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 28? Thank you. All those opposed? Item 28, passage unanimously. And all those in favor of item 29? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 29, passage unanimously. The moderator will now ask Mr. Cannon to read the items or present them 30 through 33. Item 30, same motion, public library. 
personal services, $116,295. Expenses, $41,247. Less grant and aid, negative $10,736. Net expenses, $30,511. Total, $146,806. Item 31, same motion, Historical Commission, expenses $250. Item 32, same motion, 250th Parade, expenses $13,000. Item 33, retirement of debt, principal and permanent debt, $573,400. Thank you. Second, does anybody have any questions or comments on 30 through 33? Diane has a question. Diane has a question, Mr. Microphone. Sorry. Diana Peltieri, Karen Drive. Why did we lose $10,000 in grant aid? Is there some way we can recoup that or did we not meet a requirement? Does anyone have any additional information on that? You can answer that for the library. Yeah. Uh, $10,000 or $10,736 is, in fact, the amount of money that comes into the library as a grant and aid. So it doesn't need to be raised by the town to pay for the school budget. That pays for part of the school budget. There is the a grant of $10,000. The library budget. The library budget. I'm sorry. The library budget. The, the grant is the $10,000. So each one of these items has to pass by a majority. All those in favor of item 30, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item 30 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 31, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Item 31 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 32, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? 32 passes unanimously, and item 33, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? Item 33, passage unanimously. Mr. Libera will now present the items 34 through 37. Oh, there you are. <laughs> The finish line is in sight. Item 34, same motion. Interest, $463,638. Item 35, same motion. Casualty and liability insurance, $200,000. Item 36, same motion. County retirement, $924,479. And item 37, same motion, workers' compensation, $169,753. Second. Are there any questions on the items 34 through 37? So each one of these has to also pass by a majority. So for item 34, all those in favor? Any opposed? Item 34 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 35? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 35, passage unanimously. All those in favor of item 36? Thank you. All those opposed? Item 36, passage unanimously. And all those in favor of item 37? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 37, passage unanimously. Mr. Libero will now present the items 38 through 41 to complete this article. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 38, same motion, Council of Governments, $2,318. Item 39, same motion, unemployment compensation, $40,283. Item 40, same motion, Group Health and Life Insurance, $1,473,411. And Item 41, same motion, the Reserve Fund, $130,000. Second. Thank you. 
Are there any questions regarding items 38 through 41? All right, so each one of these has to pass by a majority. All those in favor of item 38? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 38 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 39? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 39 passes unanimously. All those in favor of item 40? Thank you. All those opposed? Item 40 passes unanimously. And all those in favor of item 41? Thank you. Any opposed? Item 41 passes unanimously. Three more motions to go. The moderator will now call on Mrs. Shonaki to present the motion under Article 27. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from the Capital Equipment Needs Stabilization Fund $158,400 for the purpose of reducing the funding from the tax levy for the fiscal year 2008 appropriations. Thank you. Can I have a second? I want to discuss it. Uh, basically, this is the, uh, the amount is for the payment of fiscal year 2008 debt for prior year's capital purchases that were approved by the Capital Improvement Committee. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? So, this motion is coming out of a stabilization fund which requires a two-thirds majority to pass. So all those in favor of the motion under Article 27? Thank you. All those opposed? So Article 27 passes unanimously and therefore by a two-thirds majority. The moderator now calls, so for the, I'm sorry, the motion under Article 28 will not be presented. It is actually out of order and Attorney Ryan will explain to the remaining crowd why that is. Ed Ryan again, the town attorney. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. And before I get into discussing uh, Article 28, the motion offered under it, uh, I must acknowledge that I misspoke earlier when I indicated the Massachusetts law provides for a two-thirds vote to put money into a stabilization fund as well as taking money out of a stabilization fund. Uh, that's what the law used to be. Uh, recently, within the last year, the legislature changed the law with respect to placing money into a stabilization fund, and that can be done by majority vote. It doesn't change the outcome of what we were discussing under Article 26 of the school department budget because that involved taking or transferring money out of the stabilization fund. Uh, with respect to Article 28 and the motion uh, offered under it, uh, Mr. Fernia uh, submitted to the select board uh, what we call a petitioned article. Uh, essentially, under Massachusetts law, the select board uh, has the responsibility of calling town meetings, preparing the warrant, and offering uh, the motions under the particular articles. Uh, there's another way to get a motion or an article on a town warrant, and that's by a citizen petition. Uh, and that's what Joe did in this particular respect. However, when I was inquired of as to whether or not it was an appropriate uh, article and order or motion, uh, I suggested to the moderator that I deem the motion uh, out of order. Uh, the motion seeks to appropriate $25,000 and directs or orders that the select board expend it to install a digital sign to be located on town property, uh, the location to be determined at a later date. Uh, and the purpose of which was to improve communication between the town of Granby, its residents regarding town programs and services, community events, and public safety concerns. 
And while the suggestion may have some merit, uh, it doesn't have a legal basis. Uh, you are the legislative branch of the town government, uh, and as such, you cannot order the executive branch or direct the executive branch to do or not to do something. And it is for those reasons that I suggested to the uh, town moderator that the motion under the article would be out of order. Thank you. The moderator calls on Witt. Do you have a question? We have a question in the back. Yep. Thank you. Uh, John Matthew, 288 Taylor Street. Uh, attorney, can you offer any suggestions to Joe on what he can do to get something like that done? Because he obviously put in a lot of work, and not to have an answer from you or anyone from the board to suggest to Joe, hey, Joe, you did a lot of work, but do it this way. Can you make that suggestion, sir? Thanks. Uh, there's basically no legal way to do it uh, except uh, maybe vote the selectmen out of office and get some in there who are of like mind. Uh, my suggestion, I guess, would be to circulate a pet petition amongst the town and get as many signatures as you could and present it to the board of select, select, the select board. Uh, that would be a, an urging and, in my view, a strong recommendation that this is what the citizenry of the town of Granby uh, would like to do. Uh, in that instance, you may be successful in persuading them to sponsor an article in the future uh, that would accomplish this. Yes, Mr. Fernia. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. So is the violation that I designated you to, to locate it on town property, or is it that you can't bring this kind of petition, period? And so if that's the truth, then what kind of petition can a citizen bring to town meeting? Let's start with what you can't do. And as I indicated, you can't bring a petition to town meeting that seeks to order the executive branch to do something or not to do something. That is a prerogative of theirs and within their discretion in their elected office. Uh, there are other types, I guess, of uh, those don't come to mind right now, Joe, but there are other types of citizen petitions that can be, uh, can be brought that don't contain uh, a direction or an order for the executive branch to do or not to do something. So we'll be moving on to the motion, which will be presented by Mr. Bale under Article 29. We should have a really long discussion on this one. I'm impressed that everybody is here. If I had cupcakes, I'd give everybody one. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to assess the amounts raised and appropriated under these articles and warrants on the estates and personal property of the town of Granby. Second. Uh, very quick explanation. This authorizes the, um, authorizes the assessors to make assessments on our property so that we can um, pay taxes. <laughs> but I really think you should vote for it anyway. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments? So this motion must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. And now the moderator is happy to call for a motion. Do you have a question? Oh, wait for the microphone, please. Over here, over here first. John Marcy, 541 Amherst Road. Uh, I'd like to propose a motion to revisit Article 15. So you're asking for a motion to reconsider? Pardon? 
You're asking for a motion to reconsider Article 15. Yes, to re-discuss it, however the right wording should be. Well, the problem with reconsidering a motion at this late hour is most of town meeting that was here when they voted on Article 15 has now left. And due to the unfairness of leaving them out of the vote, we, I cannot consider that motion to reconsider. Okay, that's right. So now, I will ask for a motion to dissolve the annual town meeting. Can I have a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you, and I hope there is nobody opposed. Thank you. The annual town meeting is now over.